Welcome back to the Casual Marks Wrestling Podcast. And man, it's been a weird fucking 48 hours. <laughs> Alright, let's just jump right into it. <sighs> Fuck it. Uh, it. This is being recorded for 16 2020 First off, rest in peace, Howard Finkel. You will be missed. Hopefully your family's doing well. Thoughts and prayers to them. Indeed. I'm going to miss you forever. The Finkmeister. He was the age of 69. Nice. So let's Damn, get he's only it. four days off. From what? 420, 420, or 420. 2020. Yep. Being 69. That would have been 420 insane. of the fourth month of the 20th year and being 69 years old. Yeah, that's 420. Yeah, I, know, I meant 420 of like the 20th day of the fourth month and then the, the fourth month. We should month go ahead and say Benjamin <laughs> has been drinking. <laughs> So, this will be an interesting experience. What have I not been drinking? That's, That's a good the... question. All of these he has been drunk for. No, I have not. That's a lie. Because most Just the drink. first one and the second. No, those, those were during the morning time. Oh, uh, that's true. I'm so not anyways, saying I'm above drinking in the morning time. Just saying that. Uh, hey, hit a thumbs up if you're also down to drink in the morning. Thumbs up for day drinking. <laughs> thumbs down for abstinence. <laughs> Thumbs down if you have sex for marriage. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> so let's hop right on into this one. Uh, WWE lays off wrestlers even after Florida deems pro wrestling essential. Are we going to talk about Linda McMahon and her... Let's do Linda, it. Quotation, Linda McMahon's donation. You're to... talking about, quote, Linda <laughs> McMahon, end quote? <laughs> yeah. If that is her real name. I, I mean, like, quote, Linda McMahon, as in Vince McMahon's not calling all the shots because he's had so many mm -hmm. court cases against him that... <laughs> now, first of all, we should clarify, in, in case anyone doesn't know, there was a donation from an organization which Linda McMahon runs for $18.5 million to the state of Florida... Which then immediately after <laughs> declared the WWE to be a essential business. What a coincidence! It could be a coincidence, but if it is a coincidence, no one in the Florida government has much of an idea of how to do damage control and timing. <laughs> Who because, is? Because, wow. Who do they donate it to? Though do they donate it to like the governor of Florida? Bush. Um, I'm just kidding. It's a natty light. Natty Light, if you're watching, sponsor <laughs> the Casual Marks Wrestling Podcast. Send me free merch, baby. I, we I will. We have some ideas for partnering. Miller may have Stone Cold Steve Austin, but you've got Jacob and Benjamin. Any any beer cup, any alcohol in general that anybody that wants to <laughs> stay <Stadium. laughs> sponsor us, please. Anyone Raid is Shadow out there. Legend. I'm waiting for that phone call. Who? Raid Shadow Legends. Who is that? I see you don't watch YouTube. No, I don't. Raid Shadow Legends is the number one MMORPG. This seems like we're already sponsored. <laughs> Could you imagine? If you haven't checked four. out MMORPG Gaming. Anyways, it's uh, Governor Ron DeSantis. I knew it was DeSantis. DeSantis. Sounds like uh, Santa. That's down there. He's like, you know what? You've got to be fucking insane to run Florida. The <laughs> most insane true, state true. of the union. You know, and he's like... On a, no, I should say the most... Spring Breakers, welcome! Come on down! <laughs> and then I must say, like, Florida's the craziest the of the continental United States. Because I feel like Alaska's Alaska's insane. Alaska doesn't count as United States. That's Russia. That's Canada That's and Russia. Russia's love child that we had adopted. <laughs> yep, I like, Canada just... and Russia didn't want to take care of it, so like, we gave it. Well, we can deal with it, I Howard's guess. Howard's <laughs> folly! So anyways, yeah. that's when they bought uh, Alaska for like... Probably it was like... Part of the Louisiana Perch, I'm nope. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, let's go ahead and talk about this. So first of all, um, WWE out, today... Man for keeping Raw and SmackDown going, baby. WWE has announced they're going to be going back to live TV shows from Florida. They're going live? They're going to do live TV shows. Whew. And because they're essential, they're able and to. And NXT, too? Yep. Wow. Some people are saying, and I think this is true, so I don't know why I'm saying it. Some people, like, it's not true, but their contracts with USA and Fox include live content. I'm not sure, though, why the live content couldn't be somebody, like, commentators being like, Hey, guys, here's this match from whenever... Let's talk about it afterwards. You know what I mean? I do, I do. 
Plus, WWE could also get people like us or actual like full time <laughs> wrestler podcast people to come on. We're full time. We're unemployed. Yeah, this we're podcast. unemployed. So if anyone's looking to sponsor us again, <laughs> if you're looking to just give us anything, <laughs> <laughs> please. We are desperate. Please, for the love of God. <laughs> but despite that and how they're going live, they have released thirty plus WWE superstars, producers, and coaches. Uh, plus? First, what does 30, 30 plus. plus mean? Is that more mean, than 30. I understand what 30... But does that mean there's going to be more, or that's just... It's being updated as it goes. I gave it some time before we made this so that it could be as up-to-date as possible. And that also allowed for us to say goodbye to Howard Finkel. Again, rest in peace, Howard Finkel. R.I.P. and peace. Um, now, here's the thing. Before we go into who they are that got released and what they should do now that they have been released, let's talk about why they released them. It's said that this is because they needed to cut 16% across the board of the people in there in order to still turn like a profit and everything 16% like that. 16% of what? Their employees? Basically, headcount. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and so in order to go ahead and do all that, executives are going to be taking pay cuts. They're not continuing their construction of their new headquarters that they were working on in Connecticut. And they're also so letting people they, go. they started the con construction, they're just halting the construction? I think so. That or else they haven't started yet and they're delaying it. Oh. But, let's understand one thing. Dave Meltzer has reported that WWE has 500 Who's million... Meltzer? He's a very famous wrestling journalist. Okay. So he's not affiliated with WWE? No, okay. he's... They would never, ever affiliate with Is this with the five-star banger? Yep, Devil? that's okay. the guy. okay. Now, Dave Meltzer has reported, and a lot of the other dirt sheets have followed suit in this reporting from different sources, that WWE has over $500 million worth of cash reserves. And despite everything that was going on, they were still being projected to turn. It's pretty, they've got pretty good sources, yeah. They just have $500 million cash just sitting there. Yeah. Why? They're, I don't know. They're an international business. I guess you want some cash in the back pocket. But not five hundred million dollars, I wouldn't well, think. I, but anyways, they got a lot of people. They got a lot of stuff. Prepared for those losses. You think Saudi maybe. Arabia pays in something <laughs> other than cash, Benjamin? <laughs> they just have it sitting in Benjamin Man's guest bedroom, baby. No, yeah. that's. I imagine it's a throne <laughs> in Titan Towers, which is their current headquarters, and Vince McMahon's just sitting there like, <laughs> "Yes, <laughs> that's a such good <laughs> shit." <laughs> And then so anytime that someone comes in, they have to knock and go, Daddy, uh, can I come in? Is what? God damn it, what is it, Triple H? <laughs> Vince, uh, there's a pandemic. And Vince says, God damn it, what is a pandemic? A pan what? <laughs> Who's pandemic and how many stars is Meltzer given? <laughs> Anyways, uh, they also were projected, the only two sports industries... Estimated to still turn a profit, UFC and WWE. That's with this pandemic going on. Yep. WWE. Is that because of their TV deals? Yeah. And then that's no live audiences, correct? Yep. Live audiences gone, merchandise drop, WWE Network subscriptions drop, and no live shows. So that's like worst case scenario. And it's, they were still... They were still projected to have a profit... After payments and everything like that of $1.5 million of worst case scenario, profit. Profit? Yeah. So they were going to do better than break even with their yeah. $500 million cash just sitting there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and with Whew. with all the cuts they're doing and say that things get better, at before all this, they were projected a $1.1 to $1.25 billion dollar Profit. Is that best case scenario? Yeah, or? that's everything best case scenario. Well, and then on top like, of that, there's merchandise and network. I just mean like that's like best case scenario is in like there is like we have live crowds. We have. Yep. Okay. So, so I mean, that's like, I don't know how many percentage that is right now, but. I mean, you have to think though, WWE last year had a $1.1 billion profit and this year they were projected 1.1 to 1.25. That's a 99% decrease in profit, is it not? From what? From like one hundred billion to, or one billion to one million. Ish, yeah. That's like a ninety-nine percent decrease. Yeah. So that's but pretty, pretty big, pretty large. That profit before payments of the one point five. 
was not a profit. The net, you know what? Net profit or gross profit? Gross profit was one point one five or one point one to one point two five billion. Net profit's the one point five million. That was worse. I'm I'm confused. Basically, WWE's doing fine and wouldn't have lost money in the year either way. So they would have done. I'm confused. About They'd the still do better. Million profit. One point one to one point two five billion dollar gross profit. Okay. Net profit. Even with everything going on, still projected 1.5 million. That's a lot of freaking cost they have. Yeah. But understandable. Alright. And, with all the firings that they had, the 30 plus, they have saved a grand total of 4 million. So that means they're probably going to be 5 million. Apparently, yeah. If theoretically, if be. their content is... <laughs> I don't know who all they fired off the top of my head. Well, we seen... will talk about that. But beforehand, I do want to say a lot of people are saying this is what Vince and Co. had to do in order to keep share... I want to say sharecroppers, but that's not what they're called. Shareholders. Yeah, shareholders and like Wall Street, well, people like that to be we started successful. This recording that they're, um... Their stocks did go up today, yeah. 1.97%. Yeah. That's... So I guess it worked. <laughs> I guess so. But here's my thing, okay? And you know, if that's, that, you, is that what makes you point. want to invest in a company? Them firing top stars and top performers? Are we being honest? Yeah. If it makes a profit, yes. But how is that making a profit if you're worsening your product? Are you worsening your product, though? That's what we'll go ahead and get into. But, so, side note, ahead. XFL bankrupt. Well, guess what? WWE had large financial like backing standing in the XFL. Yeah, I understand that's what I'm saying. And they've lost that. So really, that's Vince McMahon taking a pretty big L. And guess how much he had put into that? He sold a lot of shares to Stephanie. No, but guess Triple how H. much he put into that with WWE money? How much? Reports are saying five hundred million. So there goes that five hundred million dollar cash value just sitting aside. I guess so. They're gonna have to do one more Saudi Arabia show. <laughs> Saudi Arabia, we're coming back for the last time. Yeah, for the last time. as They are on a deal until like now to 2024, and I think this started in 2018. That'd be fun to get and a Saudi And you know what Arabia part show. of it? No, it wouldn't. <laughs> because, like, two weeks after they announced all of this is when they had that big thing where I think it was a Syrian reporter that went there, just uh, disappeared. Yeah. yeah, that was And bad. everyone was like, hmm... And, and WD was still like, the no, we're going. Must go on. <laughs> we're still going. Owen Hart, show must go on. That's what he wanted. <laughs> I mean, they didn't know it at the time. But just remember, the night Chris Benoit died, he was supposed to be at a show. Uh, and that show still went on. And they didn't put in the wellness call until the next day. Yeah. So all I'm saying, sus. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into this. We'll go first it's through like, the superstars, like the and then we'll go I through saw. the NXT superstars. Can I see the meme that I saw? Which one? It said, no matter which way you flip a sandwich, the bread always comes first. That's the WWE's mindset, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's such good <laughs> shit. So we'll go through WWE superstars, and then some NXT superstars, That's right there. WWE producers, and then performance center coaches. No matter what. What? No merch. matter what side of the... <laughs> no matter which side of the sandwich you're at, the bread comes first. And then on the back, it's such good shit. <laughs> if you want merch, just wait it out. We'll get to it eventually. <laughs> Tell your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's pull start another, this. Pull up on the computer. <laughs> just keep refreshing on YouTube and give us more views. Let's go. You ready, Benjamin? Yes. Number one, Drake Maverick. Never heard of him. Yes, you have. Drake Maverick, he was the general manager of 205 Live for a bit. He was the manager of AOP for a little bit. But probably in WWE, what he's most famous for is his antics with the 24-7 championship. Trying ah. to win it from R-Truth, uh, waiting to consummate his marriage with his super oh, hot the wife. Little, the little bitty one? Yep. And then finally getting the 24-7 championship, being in the hotel room, ready to consummate the marriage for R-Truth to come in and... Pin him on the bed while he was wearing nothing but the 24-7 championship. It should have utilized a small package. Thank you, Corey Graves. <laughs> uh, that's a shout out to Corey Graves. Corey Graves, if you're watching, big <laughs> shout out to you. You're not as good as Bobby the Brain, but damn it, you're close. <laughs> so Drake Maverick, he is going to be on the next couple of NXTs. 
He's a part of the Cruiserweight Interim Championship Tournament. But here's the thing. We know he's been released. He, on his Instagram, has gone to say, in a very emotional one, where he's crying, it's... It's actually very sad. He's given a lot of his life to the company and the to business. WWE? Well, to the pro oh, wrestling, wrestling world in general. He comes from Impact. He was known as Rockstar Spud. He was really close with Ethan Carter the Third, aka EC3, EC3, who we will talk about in a little bit. But he's given a lot. I'm gonna put and that in the back of my brain. I got should notes right Rest- now, right now. Listeners, you also put it in the back of your brain. We'll get there and see if our notes match up. But he has announced. Those matches on NXT will be the end of his wrestling career. Gotcha. After oh, this, he's what is he done. Do? Don't know. Hmm. He doesn't know, but he's done. With I know. Us. What? It's not the end of his wrestling career. Do you think it's all just a work? <laughs> no, I don't think it's a work. I just think he hasn't figured it out yet. Once he listens to the podcast, that's when he. <laughs> Look, Drake, if you're listening, I think you might. If you want to hang up the wrestling boots, I understand because it does take a toll. Maybe but have you looked for, for, into being a manager <laughs> for Gavin James? He's going to be big one day, brother. Or a third member of the Casual March podcast. <laughs> Come on, on. We always need a British person. Oh, he's British? If there's one thing to make a wrestling podcast more successful, it's a Brit. Yeah, that's a big right, right there. Drake Maverick, though, he's, he's very good. He's yes, a good comedy heel. He's very willing to make himself look stupid, which is very important. If anyone has proven how important it is to mock yourself, it's Kurt Angle, and he's in the Hall of Fame. But we'll talk about Uh, Kurt Kurt Angle Angle in a little bit as well. You have anything to say about Drake Maverick? Um, Just that I did enjoy his antics with R-Truth. It really is sad just how this is all playing out, and I'm... Especially for everyone else that we're about to go to, and Drake Maverick, if you're listening for you too, I don't want this to be the end of wrestling for you, because the indies nowadays, you can still be very lucrative, as I'm sure wrestlers know, but it's just, there's a lot of options, and WWE is no longer the be-all, end-all if you want to be a pro wrestler. It is still probably the goal, but... When can I talk about the whole big picture issue with WWE? My big issue with the... Whenever you want to go now, go ahead. I don't know. I'm just going to say that they have too much talent on their roster to even... Yeah, well... To even be able to produce and market and sustain let's, all um, of them anyways. We'll do that at the very end. Then. Okay. And we'll still look at some of the people that are still hired. And you know what? We'll just... If WWE is really wanting to lay off people and they're that concerned about their money... There's a good bit of people that WWE well, it's a disservice to those, should be doing. A lot of these people that are on this list, it's a disservice to them anyways because they were getting shit on in WWE anyways. and they weren't. Yeah. And it's kind of a shame because some of these people, as we'll talk about, have been with WWE for so long. Like but that's years. also where you get to the point of, do you reward talent or do you award loyalty over the... Well, think about someone like with... You know, like producers, you know? Well, like, I'm um, talking about straight up, strict up, straight up, <laughs> straight up, well, on screen talent. Now let's talk about this And guy content. Next. Heath Slater. Heath Slater, I am all. No, no, there's no buy side. I am the biggest Heath Slater fan of all time. I'm one man band. I am three man band. Fuck you, Drew McIntyre. But <laughs> Gender, you're cool, but you're on thin fucking <laughs> ice, apparently. Because they, they left Drew McIntyre, or, um, fucking Heath Slater behind. He's brought out that one-man band all by but himself. But think about it, Heath Slater, he's got, like, Heath Slater has done pretty much everything he's been asked of. Yeah. Great. Because he started out with the Nexus. Yeah. Which, um, the Nexus and was And they hot. shit on. They did shit on the Nexus, and they really ended up burying him. Yeah. After that, Heath Slater was a part of the core on SmackDown, which also got shit on. Yeah. And was one of the worst factions of all time. Then, after that, he kind of fucked around and was a jobber for a while. He had a nice little showing in the Money in the Bank in 2011 for SmackDown. He did a corkscrew sent on to the outside, so that's cool. That's what I'm saying, he can work. Yeah, he can work. And then, um, he became kind of one of those 205 Live guys. Or not 205 Live, like, WB Main Event, WB Superstars kind of guy. Yeah, which you can still be successful at, but I don't know. For me, personally, 
the one man band, I was over for it. I yeah, was... and even during that time as the one man band, that's when he did everything with the legends leading up yeah. to Raw 1000, where he was getting jobbed out pretty much week by week by people like Vader, DDP, JBL. You know and who like, was also a successful jobber? The Brooklyn Brawler. He is. Put him in the Hall of Fame, WWE. But I mean, Heath Slater did all that. And then after all that went on, he had Three Man Band. And while Three Man Band was just, you know, like jobbers and they helped to get people over, they did it. And it's kind of hard to do that. Because yeah, you got to think is. your job's to go out there and make the other guy look What's strong. Good? Yeah. And you also have to get some kind of fan following. So it's just not, oh, they hired some kind of, like, forget about them weekly. Like, oh, I don't even know who this guy is. Yeah. And then, I mean, something like Three Man Band, like, Say what you want about the three-man band. They've had two out of three of their members go yeah. on to be WWE champions. And Heath Slater was fucked. And, I mean, Heath Slater, even after three-man band ended and he was just kind of warming around in the mid-card, then you had the great story with him during the draft being like, I want a SmackDown Live contract. Yeah. I've got kids. And Shane O'Mac and Dan Bryan were like, no, you're Heath Slater. Yeah. And he was like, well, what if I win the tag team titles with my buddy Rhino? Rhino... It's not on this list. I don't know. He must yet. have already been released. Uh, uh, maybe yet. I don't know. But I mean, you gotta think I feel like he's got a legend like. contract because Rhino's freaking. We watched some of those old clips. ECW. Yeah, and Rhino's Rhino. been wrestling for 30 years, it feels like. Yeah, because he was around in the 90s. Yeah, I know. Probably so like closer to 20 years, but still, 20 years of wrestling. Yeah, I think someone like Undertaker is at 26. That six year difference. It's only six years. Yeah. And but anyways, core, baby. I mean, Heath Slater, I don't know what's going to be next for him. Uh, Heath Slater, if you're listening, I don't say this to upset you and anyone that's a huge Heath Slater fan, including you, Benjamin. Man. I don't think he's going to be a world champion somewhere. I don't either, but I think he has a place in the WWE. I think he has a place really anywhere. And where I could really see him is the NWA, which recently has relaunched their Power Weekly show. But what's interesting about it is it's a studio show. What does that mean? What it means it's a live never... studio. I'm confused. What so, is... way back in the day... So, like, think you about have, how, like, like you the Tonight Show stage? Kind of, okay. actually. You know how, like, sitcoms used to be recorded in front of a live audience? Right. So is this, like, on the a NWA? closed set. Yeah. Really? Huh. And I think he's slated... That's where people now... I'm pretty sure anything? Marty's... It comes on YouTube. I'd, I'd be like willing to watch that. I want to watch. It's that. actually really that. neat. That's what, even where Marty Skrull has been there. The finger They've breaker. Had, yep, Marty Skrull, the finger breaker. Uh, that's where uh, Damian Sandow ended up going. Really? Yeah. The, the NWA is. It has a very long legacy. It's very prestigious, and it's something that could really use someone like Heath Slater to kind of help, not legitimize it, but bring attention a to name. it. Name. Yeah. Uh, he and he probably couldn't be Heath Slater, but. You know, still. And I know, as a Mark, and all you Marks listening, I know that we're supposed to hate when a company pushes someone for being a WWE guy, but you have to understand that's he who's recognizable. Yeah, he was at the pinnacle of... It's like if someone like from, say, Giannis Antetokounmpo, or however you're supposed to say his last name, because it's Do too long and dumb. you think people know basketball? That's... Say Michael Jordan yeah, there we go. Left, the, left the NBA... And went to, like, the, the Chinese MLB. League. Well, I'm keeping it in the same sport. I'm saying but say he went to the Chinese League. Those Chinese teams that got him are going to have him as the main star. Well, I'll give you an actual, like, representation of that. I don't know if you know who Jimmer Fredette is. Nope. You don't know who that is? He's a little white boy. He played, I think he played at BYU basketball. Yeah. And he, he didn't shoot the hell out of threes. Oh yeah, and like he, Trey Young levels, like better probably. Steph Curry just levels, better. Like Clay Thompson I don't know about levels, better. He just shoot really well. Like he was like people loved him for whatever reason because he's the undersized white boy who can shoot threes. Like that's I do just, like that. Yeah, that's what I mean. That gets over in wrestling. <laughs> that gets over in basketball. And he like he's been like the highest paid Chinese basketball player in the in their basketball league for a lot of years, and he had the choice of like coming to back to the NBA to be in the G League because he tried to be in the NBA but he couldn't be successful because he was so little. Yeah. But, and then he had to come, the chance to come back and be in like the G League and be back in the league but he, he also has the opportunity to stay in China and be like the greatest Chinese basketball player of all time or Chinese league basketball player of all time and he's staying in China right now and that's, I mean, I that's kind of like people him. like Kenny Omega the Young Bucks like they had six-figure deals from WWE yeah. but do you go there 
and possibly have something where you get kind of tossed to the side in a couple of years, like we'll talk about to some of the hot indie people that got dropped from this, or do you stay on the indies and be like, he was so good and he was never there? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, where, where did we say that Drake Maverick was joined? Drake or, Maverick's announced he's not wrestling anymore. I don't... Uh, I think that he might... I don't know. He could be good with, like... Since shit, he was, like, all the 205 Live or anything like that. Yeah. He would be, like, a really, really good, like, producer of uh, wrestling promotion. I actually think Drake Maverick would be really good at not only being a producer, I think he's a really strong on-air... Yeah, I was going to say, Like, yeah. character. Character hero. Heel. And I think... Even if he's not a heel, he's just, you know, the little dude who's, like, even kind of like an yeah. underdog... It would be very He's interesting funny. to kind of tell the different story, like the reverse almost of Stone Cold and Vince McMahon, where you have the plucky leader who's like, he's new in the business and he's trying to make everyone like him, and then a top level heel is like, no, you're a piece of shit, I fucking hate you, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. And I think Drake Maverick, because he's kind of little and he's kind of a goofy character naturally, would be perfect for that. Yeah. Someone like Ring of Honor, who are on kind of hard times right now without oh, everything going on. Everything. No, even without that, Ring of Honor was on some hard times. Really? Because Ring of, Honor, Ring of, Ring of Honor. Honor treated some of their superstars poorly, oh. and then the formation of AEW hurt the rest of the indies really bad, because yeah, those sure. were kind of the bigger stars that people wanted to see in those indies. Right. But, I think Drake Maverick could really help Ring of Honor out, or even MLW, and really even NWA. I, like, I really like the NWA. So, I while I don't like Jim Cornette, you'll hear me is bring he, up is the he NWA, NWA right now. He was, he's the guy, I think I told you a couple of, it was probably like two or three months ago now, he's the guy who on commentary made the comment about the guy who was so tough he could strap a bucket of fried chicken to his back and ride a moped through Ethiopia. I don't remember that. Oh, <laughs> it's rough. Uh, well, that's it's not, rough. that's not great commentary. I'm not a huge fan of it's Jim not, Cornette. It's not JBL level. It's no, no, no. somebody called... <laughs> Somebody call PETA! <laughs> Alright, let's hop into this next one. You will not remember him, but I will make you remember him. Kurt Hawkins. I know the name. You know the name. He the came Genesis? in as one of the Edgeheads. You remember the Edgeheads? No. Edge had a little group of followers for a while that were Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Zack Ryder was in it? Yep. And then that was part of La Familia that had Vicky Guerrero and Chavo. I know La and then also Edge and the Edgeheads. And they were the ones who waged war against The Undertaker going into WrestleMania 24, which led to the now historic run of Charles Robinson as he sprinted down. <laughs> oh, I love that. When oh, he was coming so down that long ramp. Oh, yeah. That great, great moment. If you don't know what it is, you better. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the background as Charles Robinson Charles Robinson's sprinting. Yeah. It needs to be. Mini Nature, brother, I love you. Mini Nature, if you're watching, come on. Well, we've got some questions. But Kurt Hawkins, after that, he was a tag team called the Major Bros with uh, Zack Ryder for a while. Not really much of anything. They're kind of, again, you know, like enhancement talent. Right. And then Kurt Hawkins became similar to how we talk about Heath he Slater. He was one of those, like, kind of real down on the card. Like, before they're even on TV, he's got to go and get gets People beat up by up. Braun Strowman yeah. when it's just in the live crowd and stuff like that. But then he got released for a little bit. He has his own wrestling school. Does pretty well. From he has his own wrestling school? Yeah, he, he trains people. Oh, wow. But then he came back, and he went on a historic losing streak. <laughs> like, over, well over 100. Really? Yep. And this is what's going to blow your mind. He teamed back up with Zack Ryder, woo, woo, and it woo. kept the losing streak going. Until, at WrestleMania, the Revival were like, yeah, okay, you can get a tag team title match. It was a, actually a pretty good match, but that's that seven-hour WrestleMania where uh, you're just like, Ugh. Yeah. And they even broke out a brain buster onto Kurt Hawkins on the floor, and Ooh. Kurt Hawkins won. Really? Yep. I'm pretty sure it was with a roll-up, but he still won. They won? That's a big WrestleMania moment. And this is a that, WrestleMania like, winner that yeah, they released. They, and won the Raw Tag Team titles from one of the top with tag Zach teams. Ryder? Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. So they released two... Uh, we haven't got the Zack Ryder, but spoiler alert. Yeah, he's released. also released. Yeah. But we'll talk about why Zack Ryder's even worse in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I know. But then, yeah, Kurt Hawkins, that was it. He's huh. even He's been on as recently as when the Viking Experience debuted. They won the tag team titles from Hawkins wow. and Ryder. Huh. And now he's gone. 
That's kind of See, crazy. I think Kurt is one that will be a, you know, he's like a local federation guy. Who Not really. Like, he's one of those, like, the high school federations. You know what I mean? Like, like the, the ones that come to, like, stuff. Hillcrest and stuff. Yeah. Like, he's like, ooh, I was in WWE for a little bit, and now I'm... And then he'll show up to be kind of, like, the nice, like, oh, come and get your picture with this person. Pay $20 and get your picture made with... <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. And that's fine, but I, I mean, he's got his own wrestling he school, is. he'll probably run that. I don't, say, like, I don't know how old he is. Kurt Hawkins. Age... 34, so he's... He's young for Yeah, like for wrestling. wrestling. Yeah. And you gotta think, he's been in... Let's see if I can find Kurt. I'm gonna go, I, I would not mind to see him and... I, I, I would break up the whole Zack Ryder thing. Break that up from the WWE, like, aspect of it. But to see them go to, like, a he uh, He made his debut in 2004. 16 years ago, and he's 34. So he was 18? Yep. Holy cow. He was trained by Mikey Whipwreck. I don't know who that is. Mikey Whipwreck was pretty much the ECW equivalent of... Mankind. Um, no, wow. of Daniel Bryan. Oh, really? So technician? That white baby... Fa- yeah, kind of. Gotcha. But he well, signed with WWE in 2006. I wouldn't 14 mind, years ago when he was 20. That's crazy. I wouldn't mind seeing him going somewhere, though, like a, like a bigger promotion. I want to see him go... I'd say the wrestling school is all good, everything like that. Like, you have the WWE, like, thing on your resume for your wrestling school, but he still has a lot left in the team. He's only 34. Honestly, I could see... I would... I think it would probably be best to keep them as a tag team and put them somewhere. For a little bit. Yeah. Just for a little bit, just say, and ooh, honestly, these were the raw tag... Or not even say that, just say, like, I don't know. I don't know how, what you can say in the indies like that. But just, you uh, could say it, but you usually don't. But just... I, I, Indies probably already know it. Like, they were the Raw Tag Team Champions. Yeah. And then, but honestly, you know where Kurt Hawkins could really benefit not only the product, but also himself? What? Japan. Really? Well, he, you gotta think, he has a wrestling school, and yeah. Japan's a notoriously good place to go and learn to wrestle. Right. He'll be able to help train some of the younger people while also, for the first time really ever, being, being able man. to show off. Right. He wouldn't be the man. But he'd be bigger than what he was Put him somewhere like DDT, WWE. and he could be... What is a, DDT? It's a wrestling promotion uh, in Japan. Put him somewhere even like New Japan, where he could be like a strong mid-carder. I was thinking about Ring of Honor, where he could be... He could do good in Ring of Honor, honestly, yeah. and that would help him because he's probably trained a good bit of those people. I uh, know, that's what I was thinking. And, I mean, Ring of Honor, if you guys are struggling still, like, Kurt Hawkins is a good guy to bring in as not only a producer, a trainer, and a wrestler. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And then, I, I just think he would probably, uh, 34, I don't really know what his personal life is or anything, but. I mean, you gotta think, that's a long time to be wrestling since he started when he was 18. Well, I know, I understand, I don't know if he's got, like, wife and kids and everything like that, if you want to move to somewhere like Japan, but. That's true. I mean, AJ did it. AJ Styles. As you know, WWE's aspect is AJ didn't care about his wife. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, did. they brought that up for yeah, a bit. Yeah. I know, but... Um, oh, Wendy! <laughs> what is that from? Samoa Joe <laughs> calling out AJ Styles' wife and being like, I'm gonna have sex with you. <laughs> You'll call me daddy now instead. And then AJ was like, I can't take no more. I'm doing a phenomenal four on <laughs> I love AJ Styles. Ah, finally. The ones that I've really wanted to talk about. Carl Anderson Why and Luke Gallows. Why are you just Gallows. cutting my segment off? I'm just kidding. Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, the good brothers, members of the club. Of the club? Yep. They, yeah, they need to go to Japan, 100%. Oh, absolutely. They should go straight back to Japan. Like, pack your bags. I will help you pack your bags. You were spit on, shit on, everything you could think of. It's WWE. so sad. It really is. Because you first of all have to remember, Luke Gallows was Festus. Yeah, I know. They stuck him, and it's not correct or anything so don't hate on me in the comments but if you do I'll block you anyways <laughs> I'll come I will pull I will pull a Jane a Jim Cornette and just block the people that disagree with me <laughs> Festus's gimmick similar to Eugene was that he was retarded and we were supposed to laugh at that WWE wanted us to laugh at like ha ha he is mentally impaired and he took that gimmick yeah I know willingly he also had a great theme song him and Fe- or Jesse that's what the one that was, was Biscuits and Gravy! Oh my goodness, that was the... Gr- I loved them. I loved them but so But you gotta remember, after much. that, CM Punk, Luke Gallows is the guy that helped CM Punk start the Straight Edge Society. Yeah. A very hot angle. And 
You remember I mean, CM Punk did we cure watched, him of his mental. Remember we were in Greenville and we watched. Yeah, yeah. Her name's Serena or Serenity. One of those two. I thought that was so real. Whenever she came out of the crowd, she's like, "Oh my God, I love you!" And he's like, "Please shave my head. Be with me, or what? I am your savior." And he shaved that bitch's head, and then yeah. Luke Gallows was. And just I was there, like, I accept <laughs> I this in my <laughs> life. I accept the teachings of straight edge. And that old guy behind us was like, uh, "You're only savior, Jesus Christ, boy." And then. <laughs> Don't remember, remember that part. You don't remember him saying no. that? He was like, you're only Savior Jesus. He was talking to, like, it was you and another little kid. And y'all were both like, I, was like, I accept CM Punk as my Savior. <laughs> CM Punk, he was over, brother. It's he, the new Seth Rollins gimmick, baby. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I know. But then after that, Luke Gallows even was in TNA for a very hot angle called Aces and Eights, which Aces and Eights just ripped off Sons of Anarchy. Like the motorcycle club? Yeah, they just ripped them off. (laughs) And, uh, I mean, they, no, it's literally like, they were just like, we really like this show, let's do it. I would have loved that gimmick if I would It was honestly, it was kind of cool at first. It it fell apart and got really stupid, kind of like a modern NWO, but he was there and he was one of the big deals about it. He was Doc, the Doctor of Chaos, I think it was. (laughs) And then he went to Japan, and in Japan, he's one of, I'm pretty sure he's a founding member of Bullet Club. Oh, he... That was... Oh. What? I don't know why I thought Japan was first. No. Nah. He might have been in Japan for a little bit. Well, I'm just saying... I, I don't know. I just thought that... He like, didn't get major in Japan until afterwards. Right. I guess. But he... I'm pretty sure he was a founding member of Bullet Club with, like, Finn Balor and Machine really? Gun Carl Anderson. Huh. Was, but, it, was Were they the ones that were given the people chops that we watched the... Yeah, actually, okay, that's what I where they're at the um, little, like, sushi bar, yeah. and the people are like, please chop us, yeah. and they're like... <laughs> and then they're like, the, he's holding his arms back, and he pulled his shirt off, and he's yeah, like, okay. That's <laughs> yeah, it, that's, that's the kind of respect they get in Japan, which I is want, insane. I, I want to... Whenever this quarantine shit's over, I want to chop on the chest if he's still in America. Wherever you are, I'm getting chopped in the chest for this. But, I mean, that's what's so sad. I mean... Like, Luke Gallows has proven his longevity. Yeah. And Carl Anderson, while he didn't have as much of a long, like, tenure or anything, you do have to remember, he's had a a four-and-a-half-star Meltzer match against Kazuchika Okada. I'm pretty sure it was It was single? Yeah, singles. Oh, wow. He is a very good singles wrestler. He might do the best spine buster since Batista. What up, Triple H's? I'm, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Triple H's Spine Buster. I uh, hate you. <laughs> but you know how Batista, when he would come down, he'd be like, ooh, and like yeah. drive him? Triple H doesn't do that. Yeah. He's just kind of like, oosh. <laughs> like, it looks like, you remember in South Park, the stick of truth, when you fart on Randy, and he, like, <laughs> misdirects, he's like, Kiwa! <laughs> That's what it looks like's happening with a Triple H Spine Buster. But, but Carl still- Anderson, similar to what Arn Anderson the greatest Arn. spine buster did. Didn't he popped him up and then spun to drive them. Right. Kind of like what Batista would sometimes do. Right. But unlike what Triple H does where he just kind of tosses them, he drives in with them. Right, him, yeah. Which makes true. it a good spine buster. Yeah. And Carl Anderson is good. He could have been by himself in WWE and gotten over. You think so? He's similar to what kind of like Cesaro where if you just let him wrestle, he will get over. But Cesaro hasn't gotten over because they don't just let him wrestle. They're like, go out there and be the new James Bond. And he's like, who's James Bond? I'm Swedish. <laughs> but that, that's just so sad. They came in super hot. That's debuted. what I'm saying. They, they were like hot talent from Japan. You gotta understand, when Pete, they were gotten in a package deal. AJ Styles, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, and Shinsuke Nakamura was that, were equivalently poached, like just all snatched from New Japan. Was that, and that was huge. Was that like a trade? Or was no, that, no, 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 no. Okay. It's like their it, contracts all expired. Nobody was like, come, we got oh. huge things for you. Oh. And aside from AJ, and all then, three have been letdowns. I was say, and then they just let them all. Yeah. Huh. And like. I still have a lot of faith in Their Shinsuke debut, Nakamura. they came out, they. Came out and they, they immediately really started going after the Usos, one of the top WWE tag yeah. teams. And not only that, just recently in Saudi Arabia, they won the WWE Tag Team World Cup. Really? Like a huge tournament gimmick. Yeah. They got like a giant trophy and everything to prove that the company has faith in them. 
Why are and they now they're letting, gone. Why are they letting them go, though? I don't. That's one that I don't understand. I don't understand. Because they were they? just at... How old are they? No, they're not that old. Let me look to be specific. Luke Gallows' age is 36. Okay. Carl Anderson is 40. He huh. is up there more. But you got to remember, AJ Styles is 42. Right. But, I mean, think about it. Now, Carl Anderson, the last thing we'll ever be seen of him on WWE is getting tombstoned on a roof of a barn. But Luke Gallows, Undertaker really killed him now. (laughs) Because he's never going to be back. He got thrown off that barn to his doom. That's that's a good way to write Out of existence. Maybe that's why. They got to build the Undertaker back up. (laughs) For next Saudi Arabia, baby. Yeah, for the next Saudi Arabia. When they put him against Sting. (laughs) Which apparently is the plan when this is all over. What? Thank God. God. Put me at Sting? Yeah, and look. What is Sting? In 2011 or 12, I'd be so excited. It is 2020. Sting almost got paralyzed. The only thing that can save us now is John Cena coming out of the Firefly Funhouse alive. Sting. I accidentally put um, the singer Sting. (laughs) Sting is 60. The wrestler is 60? What? Yeah. I feel old. And Undertaker is 55. Why do they I don't doing want this? to see... Why do they do this, though? I don't know. See, if it was like a... Um, they like, always do If it was like though. a 46 Undertaker and a 50-year-old Sting... They always yeah, do this. Yeah, that'd be neat. They always do this. They do try what? to... I don't know. I feel like they fucking just squeeze out the last of life of anybody who... See, they didn't used to do this. You gotta remember, even Andre got... Andre was the one who kind of... They they squeezed him out, you know? But Andre got to have a moment of of leaving, you know? Yeah, he got beat by Hulk Hogan. No, that was not when he left. Well, I know when he left, but... His last time on TV, he turned on Haku and was finally like, no, I'm the baby face again. Haku, we've talked about Uh, him, the most dangerous man alive. I thought you were saying Hulk Hogan weird. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, Hulk Hogan. Haku. 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 (laughs) But I mean, he goes out on top as a glorified baby face. The last time we saw Sting, he took a botched buckle bomb from Seth Rollins and had to be held back and like the match was almost stopped. Oh, really? Because it, it fucked up his neck. Well, see, what I was talking you about... You gotta remember, he's like 56 taking yeah. a buckle bomb. He can't do it. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. You have, like... I don't know, I feel like Andre was, like... He went out, kind of... I feel like if I was Andre, I would have liked going out that way. He, like, put over Hulk Hogan, and he, like, did the spot and everything like that. And then after that, he rode the glory days of being tag team with his hurt back, and he just was out there to make money. I mean, the thing, though, is about, like, Andre, he was always putting people over. Yeah. But here's the thing but about he... Sting versus Undertaker. Oh, yeah. Who's getting put no over? No one. It's kind of like when Sting went against Triple H at WrestleMania 31. Either one that wins, where do you go with them? I was... See, it's not is, like... Say that it was Sting this is my versus WWE Finn Balor. Black... My, um... What is it? Black Age? Is that what it's called? Black Age. Not like the black edge of society, like the 1300s of society. Oh, the dark times? Dark times, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, 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 the I, dark I ages. The dark ages. I don't remember anything from that time, honestly. Of what time? Like WrestleMania. The WrestleMania th- I, I don't I have no idea. Really? Sting. WrestleMania 31 till 36? The last conscious memory I have of Sting is like him walking out with that baseball bat and like... The last conscious memory that you should have about Sting is when... He had to face a very drugged Jeff Hardy. That, 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 yeah, okay, I do know, See, yeah. that time, that time but period. I was little at that time, and I look, love Sting. Let me, let me tell you about what's crazy, okay? The WrestleMania before that, WWE wanted to have Sting versus Undertaker. Sting really? said no and got that match in TNA. Oh, that's bad. But see, now, really, yeah, is it a dream match? Yes. But kind of like if we had CM Punk versus... Say if we had CM Punk versus Stone Cold right now. That'd be terrible. I don't know how good it would be because CM like Punk, Undertaker versus not in his prime, Und- or and like, Stone Cold, I don't know how much he could do in the ring right like now. It's like Undertaker versus Goldberg. Yeah. If that was in, like, 2002, maybe I'd be really into it. Because yeah. we got American badass, big evil yeah. Undertaker, like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And then you got Goldberg, who's like, bam, bam, bam. It's like Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather, whenever that boxing match yeah. happened. It was 
five years past its prime. Like, and say right now, we if had... That, if that match would have happened five... That boxing match would have happened five years earlier, that would have been the most hyped up, most bought anything pay-per-view of all time. And they fucked it up, and then it's... WWE does the same thing. They fuck it up, and they're like, ooh, we gotta, like, get some people in here, and then they just, they're like, who did people used to want to see? I Honestly, it wasn't like this before Saudi Arabia. Like, big stars might come back, but even when, like, someone like Batista came back, while it wasn't the original plan, he was used to put over Daniel Bryan, yeah. and then he put over The Shield. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. If you and then he was talent, gone! If you have developed talent, this is the whole big picture beforehand. You have too much talent on your roster to do justice for everybody. See, if it, say that we were getting, like, or the, say that what they were planning was Undertaker in a rematch against AJ Styles while Sting goes against Finn Balor. And then AJ and Finn Balor go over. And Sting and Undertaker don't. You have let their prestige and their legendary status rub off on this yeah. newer generation. Yeah. Yeah. But no matter what, I don't want to see six year old Sting in a ring. I'm no, I don't. I don't want to see Sting after he almost died. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like sure. what happened with Undertaker getting dropped on his head. Yeah. Like, when I saw that, I was like, I do not want more Undertaker. I, I want to remember The Undertaker as, like, I don't like, I, as The Undertaker. I don't want to see him do see, that. See, that's why I didn't Stolberg. like Semi Biker Taker. Because The Undertaker I grew up with, and I remember, and I want to remember, is. The twenty minute intro, <laughs> gong, yeah. doo -doo -doo -doo. the fire, the freaking druids come like lining in the <laughs> yeah, like versus like Triple H where he had the mohawk. When that was the end of the era, yeah, that should have been the end of the era. But like, that's it's, it's like it's would we have missed out on him versus CM Punk? Yes. Would that have sucked? Yes, because that's one of the only really good things from WrestleMania twenty nine. <laughs> but the Undertaker. Gave his streak to the company. He yep. deserves to just go away as a still, like, legendary figure. There's one See problem more and with more that. of this is hurting it. There's one problem with that. Undertaker doesn't get paid. That's true. Money Michelle, as AJ <laughs> taught us. All right. I feel like we're going to have another 28-hour podcast. If we don't <laughs> well, I can't, I can't ranch on about this for all time because it's like any other sport... People don't know when to quit. They don't know when to quit until it's too late, and then you already have the bad image of them in your head. Yeah, and WWE doesn't have to be like that because they have people to Bushy say, like, you're done. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, EC3. Someone that you really like. I you are love, really into EC3. I love EC3. It's honestly 100% because he reminds me of 100%. Ruthless aggression! The John prototype C John Cena. Yeah. Ruthless <laughs> And I think EC3 will be successful in any promotion he goes to. Well, see, in TNA, Besides he was really successful. fucking squashed in WWE. And that's... A whole well, big circle with this. WWE squashes talent that they could promote to put over talent that is old and dry and that people don't want to see. Well, see, EC3 didn't really get squashed because to get squashed, you have to get booked. Well, that's a, that's a very good point. But see, EC3, you have to understand, like, in TNA, he was one of the reasons people still watch yeah, TNA. Yeah, I know. And they just let it waste. Why even call him up to the main roster, quote-unquote main roster of Raw and SmackDown, which is still the to main roster. To be the freaking runner around of the 24-7 championship. Yeah, while he was having a little mini-feud with the Undisputed Era as a face yeah. in NXT. That's what I'm Go saying. watch, if anyone who's listening to this, go watch the... NXT North American Championship ladder match from NXT TakeOver New Orleans. That's that six-man ladder match that I made you watch, Benjamin. That's you know really good! Yeah. It's really entertaining, and everyone shines, but WWE doesn't have that. And, and I don't understand how. That's why I understand now why, like, after I asked you so many times why Tomasa Ciampa and Johnny... Johnny or Joey? Johnny. Johnny. Johnny Wrestling, whatever. Johnny, Johnny Wrestling. Joey Wrestling. Johnny Turbo. <laughs> Anyways, why I understand why they don't want to come to the main roster, because there's... Two, well, think about how little crowded. they are, you yeah, know? And it's I mean, crowded. you think someone like them, Vince is going to book over, say, someone like Drew McIntyre or that, Brock? But you got to think, like, all the talent, and then they're like, you know what, the fans want Goldberg. 
Yeah. And that the shit on I mean, look everything. at Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler yeah. probably had the second best Money in the Bank cash in of all time just because of the reaction of the arena. To who? He cashed in on Alberto Del Rio. Okay. And the crowd, even though Dolph's a heel, erupted into cheers. So loud excited. that the Miz said he could hear it outside yeah. the arena. Yeah. I do wonder why the Miz was outside the arena, <laughs> but that's not important. I feel like the Miz may have been fibbing. He may have been pulling some... <laughs> He's doing one of those... Come on! <laughs> Do knee slappers. <laughs> but he's doing it to Dolph uh, Ziggler. I'm here to show the world. I'm here to show the world. Yeah. Come on! <laughs> Anyways. EC3, I would put him back in TNA. Because uh, he... I don't... TNA is might be dead. I don't TNA know. won't die. They will outlive me. <laughs> they refuse to die. I feel like if you put... EC3 they would rather have dishonor before death. <laughs> I, and I'm, that's backwards, in yeah, case you don't know the saying. The Japanese, but I think if you put EC3 in AEW, he would shine. I think EC3 is one of the people AEW would go after. I think, I think it's limited who AEW would go after, because I, I, I really think do think... Be. I think it should be, because you don't want to be like the wash-up WWE. That's yeah. what EC or EC, that's what AEW doesn't need, doesn't want to be, and anything. I mean, that would be terrible for them to be that. So I think they should handpick a few people out of this list that they can go after and should go after. And I think EC three is one of them. Yeah, and I think the only thing that I think about AEW and EC three is will EC three and MJF be too similar? Who's MJF? Maxwell Jacob Freeman, the guy that wears the scarf and feuds with Cody. Oh, okay. I, I, yeah. But here's what I wonder, okay? Is that exactly what they both need right now? Yeah. Because really, I'll be honest, MJF apparently has some like serious stuff going on in his personal life. He oh, really? won't say what it is, and but like it was just... Are you talking about a Isaac Yankum, Kevin no, no. Nash type deal? <laughs> no. <laughs> What I'm talking about, though, is maybe we it's time to turn MJF into a part-timer. Yeah. And Just EC3, for the time being. even if you only do them, is where it's like switching them out, right? Yeah. But that could work perfectly to always have a heat magnet without either getting saturated and having to look weak because right. they leave. Right, and if you you can easily tell the story by these two guys that claim to be better than people and they're rich, and like EC3 told things, he's like, I am in the top one yeah. percent, <laughs> and I love that. Build I'm into that. For that, just make it where EC3's like, look, I don't need to be here. Yeah, my contract says that I only have to work three months out of this year, and I'm not spending those three months in Atlanta or wherever yeah. they are. And boom, he'll heat. You know, going to Miami, going to New York City. Senior, yeah, same, like, like, like that's when you can yeah. have those EC3 moments of where it's like, we're going to be in uh, Daytona. Yeah. EC3 lives 20 minutes away, so he's agreed that he'll come. Yeah. And you can have the heel commentator, whoever the fuck it is, because it oh, should I be... I love such good shit with EC3. <laughs> just have him being like, this is a truly a momentous day in AEW yep. history. We get to see... E C three, and you can even have it where like he and MJF have a little like, almost like bromance, like either a bromance or a pissing contest with each other. <laughs> where E C three is like, well, you know, I would have been here last week, but I was on my yacht what? with the Kardashians, and MJF's like, you still hang out with the Kardashians? <laughs> what a loser! Stuff like that, yeah, and like. That would be good. We we know for a fact AEW would do goofy shit because they had the whole like. Uh, EC3 and Chris Jericho where he was like do you want to be in the inner circle I don't know Christopher do you want me to be in the inner circle well I don't know Maxwell do you, you want to be in the inner circle all that shit like AW could be and I'm all the perfect it. mix of serious and scary and comedy for wrestling it's fucking raw as war all over again kind and of except they actually let people wrestle And but that's what I'm saying though that's what WWE needs to fucking say alright we gotta fix some shit and get rid of these fucking old timers that we're riding the coattails on and yeah. promote our own fucking people that are actually gonna be our future if you look eight, I mean WWE has had a consistent drop every week of their product 
Well, it's because... Even during the road to WrestleMania, which really? is unprecedented. Yeah. They just fuck up. Yeah. Like, they really do, and it's... And I'll tell you where it gets really disappointing. It's with this next guy, Leo Rush. You m- may not really know who Leo Rush is. I feel like I've heard of him. I've you heard have. you talk of him. He's the guy that was a manager for Bobby Lashley for a bit, the real little dude. If you show me a picture of him, I might know him. I'll Google him, actually. I can... I've already got one. All right, he's looking at pictures of him right now. Okay, why is EC3 and Lyra Rush right there next to each other? Where? Oh, because they got released together. Ah, uh, I do know Lyra Rush. So why is him thing, and Mark Henry next to each other? Because Mark Henry really liked him. Really? Yeah. See, see, here's the thing. Apparently, Leo Rush had like a bad backstage attitude, so they didn't use him on the main roster in anymore. Real white, like no. Yeah, this is like non kayfabe, okay. and like he was like cocky and stuff. But guess what most pro wrestlers are? Cocky. Cocky. Yeah. Because they have to be. How are you going to be able to... You're going to be like... How are you going to go out there in your tights and underwear? Look, okay. People like Leo Rush, they say that he's cocky. He's not really super respectful to the other talent. And he, like, thinks really highly of himself. But then you have someone like Goldberg be like, I'm not losing to The Fiend. No, no, no! It well, hurts my people, character. Well, those people are. I, I, I can see where that comes in. Where like that's like un, or Goldberg's over. Goldberg's fucking old. No, Goldberg is over. Yeah. But to come in there and be like, I'm not losing to this guy. Well, I'm not that, doing uh, it. But I'm just saying though, it's like if Leo Rush said like, oh, I'm not losing to whoever, then he get be, fired. Yeah. But Goldberg doesn't. Oh, but that's what that's you're what saying? I'm saying. Oh, that he's like has the same cockiness. Yes. Yeah, and that's what that's what you like, just like you said. That's what. Professional wrestlers need. But here's what's different, a level okay? Of cockiness and attitude. It's and like with MMA fighters. You need to go out there believing you're the best. Yeah, and you need that marketability to like those like those performers have to have that so the fans believe it. If they don't believe that, then the fans don't believe it. Because I guarantee you, John Cena, like I, watching all the oh, you shows, know John, John Cena, Cena believes had, he's the fucking yeah, man. Yeah, I know. John Cena thinks his shit don't stink the same way The Rock doesn't think his shit doesn't yeah. stink. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. And I guarantee, even though Kurt Angle makes himself go out there and look goofy and he's willing to be like a nerd yeah. and a geek, you know that when it comes down to it, Kurt Angle knows he's the fucking man. Yeah. And it's performing. That's what it is. It's performing, but you also And see, know- that's the thing about Goldberg versus Leo Rush. Goldberg, when he tried to have a 10-minute match with The Undertaker... Almost died. And what <laughs> was his response to almost Undertaker. dying? Almost killing the Undertaker <laughs> twice. And then he almost did the same thing to the Fiend when he couldn't pull off a jackhammer on him. He tried to do a jackhammer on the Fiend? Yes! That's a dangerous move right there. Just do three and spears. And it was just a suplex. Just do a... <laughs> he couldn't keep him up to turn it, so he just did a suplex and pinned him. Just do three spears, Goldberg, and then call it a night for you, brother. But see, Leo Rush, though, is young. Is Young, he's fast, he's agile, agile, and oh my god, he's secretly a technician. Is he the EST of Mm, the men's? Not quite. (laughs) He doesn't whip people with his hair. But the thing is, Leo Rush has always been cocky, but he gets the respect of the fans because he puts on good matches. He's someone... Is he a CM Punk? Um... Because I hate a CM Punk. He's like a cruiserweight. Imagine if... Because I don't, I, I've seen that guy, but I don't like. He's not. Oh, like wow! I love. So imagine match. the style of Ricochet with the personality of Bobby Lashley. What do you mean, Bobby Lashley doesn't have a personality? Nah, I got Lashley. him. Okay, imagine the cocky attitude of Stone Cold. Okay. But if it was Ricochet's moves, oh, really? and, like skills. Oh, why haven't you shown me this guy before? But I, he is. Leo Rush is good. Leo Rush, you. Leo Rush is the kind of person you could be like. All right, you're going one on one with Ricochet, Cedric. Does Ray, he tell? Is he, can he talk? Like, can he give a good promo? He was the mouthpiece for Bobby Lashley. He needed one. Yeah, he was it before Lana. Really? Yeah. So why did WWE just like? Because of his bad attitude. Oh. But then they put him back on NXT in 205 Live, which is run by Triple H, and he started to get over because when uh, you treat him with respect. And he's been humbled already. He's learning the business. He's like Velveteen, like Velveteen Dream, kind, kind of. of. Yeah, like Velveteen, how Velveteen was on um, Tough Enough. And then, but I mean, even on NXT, Velveteen's like call me up and everything like that. Basically, but and see, then, here's the thing about Leo Rush, right? 
He's 25. He's young and they released him? Yeah, he's only 25. Really? And Cause most he of has been here in WWE is... for about two years. Most people you said are older. I mean, yeah, like not... but that's the thing. Leo Rush, imagine oh. how cocky you would be as someone on WWE Raw when you're 23. John Cena whenever he was thugging. Yeah! <laughs> I guarantee John Cena probably had a bad attitude yeah. backstage when he first came up. Yeah. They probably got hazed for it. Yeah. But now they can't Wrestle do that. Core, baby. Yeah, yeah, probably. Undertaker probably probably drinking backstage. <laughs> Look, Leo Rush could go anywhere. He really could. I wouldn't put him on AEW. And I wouldn't put him on Ring of Honor. I would give him... I, he's the kind of person that shouldn't be on any like exclusive contract because everywhere, everywhere will want him. He's if been he's in Japan, good, he's been in PWG, he's been in ROH, all of I'm those I'm going to take your word on this, because anybody you said that I would really like, I really do like. Yeah. And, just because I guess you haven't told me him, I'll watch him later. But, he seems like he would be that type of person that you're so confident behind that he would be somebody that could go anywhere. And that's what... He is going to be the kind of person that WWE will regret to let go. He should not do an exclusive contract with him, but he could easily show up at NWA and help them a lot. So NWA is not the same like territories anymore since the NWA. There's not really territories. Oh. We have separate promotions, but they don't stick to territories. Gotcha. There's some local feds, which I call the high school feds. Oh yeah. But they are. It's not competitive between them. Gotcha. Like what territories used to be. Anyways, next up, Eric Young. Do you remember the group Sanity? No. Then you're not going to know Eric Young. Show me a picture of him. Okay, I'll show you a picture of him. He comes from TNA. He's older. Like, he really is. He's, um, 40. But, again, you want to have some older people. But That's what he like, looks like. He looks really familiar. He. This is what he looked like in TNA. Don't remember him at all That's in fine. TNA. But I feel like what WWE did, like, uh, in all honesty, with this list we've gone through so far, is they've released the older people that they feel like aren't over yet, and um, that they... Kind of, to a degree. Except for that Leo Rush, and then the, they shit on the fucking club. I mean, but, but really, EC3, you gotta think, it, Drake mind. Maverick's young, EC3's Never young. Never mind, I've been drinking. I've just <laughs> shit on my whole Look, Eric body. Young, we're not gonna go too much into him since you don't know him. He was TNA's Daniel Bryan. Really? He was huge. People loved him. So He's I have done, like, the goofy stuff. I have a question that should probably be, like, the highlight of this yeah. thing. Is WWE just sniping talent just because they can? And that's shitting? the thing. They did for a while. Is that, when that's what AEW was happening, they weren't letting people out of their contract. They were buying up people to keep them away from the competition. WWE has always, even when Vince McMahon first took over, their strategy has been, He's a big star. Let's take him so they can't use him. And then, sh if even they, if, if they don't use him, because they they took Dusty and jobbed him out for a while. That's how uh, they got Piper. That's how they got Jake the Snake. Really? Hacksaw Jim Duggan. No one, none of those were like homegrown. So they snipe other people's talent and then just hoard them until they think they can either use them or that they're too old. That they come else in can hot, use them. and then they just let them sit. Huh. But here, he was kind of shitty. <laughs> yeah. So Eric Young probably should just go out to TNA where he'll have the respect of being a veteran of TNA. I have another question for you, though. What's up? Why do these people that are hot in these other promotions like that, that are the hottest talent out there, come to WWE? Because See, they that think... could be where their cockiness bites them, where they because think, they I'm going to be a big star. They think they can take over whoever's in WWE, and they think they'll be booked, and they'll be over. And... But see, I think that's why people like Kenny Omega don't go <clears> there. Because Kenny Omega is someone that I could very easily see Vince being hot on for like a year and then just kind of letting, letting him go. Waste, yeah. Kind of what happened to Shinsuke. I was about to say the same thing with Shinsuke. I mean, Shinsuke, whenever we watched NXT like that, he was so over. Like, he was... His... The fact that his debuting entrance, not even the match itself, yeah. got holy shit chance. Yeah. That's like, what I'm even saying. AJ at the Royal Rumble didn't get that. And that's amazing in itself that AJ got the fucking Royal Rumble just spot just for his well, That's the thing. AJ's known, but really... Well, yeah. But I'm just saying, though, AJ, it, it's just amazing he wasn't squashed the way the other Yeah, and the, the only reason that I can squashed. think that he wasn't is just because 
he would leave. AJ Styles would? Yeah, I think AJ knows his value enough yeah. that he would leave. Because he left TNA for that reason. Because he wasn't They weren't years. paying him. Oh, yeah. They were paying people like Hogan and Bischoff, and they weren't paying him. And yeah. he was like, I will leave. And then they were like, no, you won't. And then he left. But Eric Young should probably go back to TNA. I feel like sometimes it's good to go back to where you were hot. Yeah. Because Eric Young's probably winding down. Just go out and have a farewell tour. Yeah. You know? This next person, he's already had his farewell tour. He was technically a producer, but he could still wrestle if he wanted to. It's Kurt Angle. And I cannot believe WWE let him go. I wanted to, I honestly, like, honest to God, I wanted to, like, cry for Kurt Angle when I heard that he was let go. Because all I, I That's can, so sad. All I can think of is, like, Kurt Angle's, like, times in WWE, like, whenever he was, like, really big, really hot and everything like that. And then he yeah, had his, like, problems and everything like that. They let him go, and he went to TNA, and he, like, he still had that problem, but he was still fucking putting on shows. And the thing is, he has cleaned himself That's what up, I'm saying. and he got to come back. He had that hero's return. I mean, go, if you watch the WWE 24 documentary, he and Vince are crying when they hug each other. I know, that's like what that. I'm saying. And, and Kurt that. Angle has sacrificed himself for WWE's entertainment. Yeah. Not yeah. even just of, like, you gotta think, he went from being like, I can never lose a match <laughs> in your promotion ever, to the point of where he was wearing a tiny cowboy hat, <laughs> and going, yippee ki -yay. <laughs> And even on top Jimmy of that... Jimmy Corn, and I don't care! <laughs> like, you have to understand, Kurt Angle was so over with the fans, he's the guy that was on pay-per-view and said, I'm not a big fan of the black people. <laughs> if I can make one person from history tap out, it would be Jesus. <laughs> and you know how that promo ends? He Help. says, I could say whatever I want and these idiots would still cheer for me. <laughs> and the crowd popped! They cheered for him calling them idiots and they were like, yeah! Kurt Angle could put an ankle lock onto a kitten and the next week the crowd would still be cheering for him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was he was what? Like right now he was the general manager of... He Raw. was no longer the general manager. He was a producer. Okay. Do you know how good some of the younger people that they have in TNA... Or not TNA, NXT getting producing help and training from Kurt well, Angle yeah. could be. Yeah. Kurt Angle, like what I said before for a lot of these people, it really doesn't matter where he goes because anywhere is going to benefit. Yeah, the, and I think they're Kurt Angle... They're drooling over the mouth at Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle, no matter where he goes, I would put him... He's someone I would send to AEW to either be the play-by-play -play commentator, a heel color commentator, or if I got my way... He would be the authority figure. What is that? A mean? heel general manager. Really? Yeah. Because here's the thing about AEW, right? Everyone knows Cody is in charge. Right. Cody is trying to still be a wrestler. <laughs> Cody should come out and be like, look, I am still a wrestler. I am not here to book myself to look strong. I am here to prove myself as a great wrestler like my father like my brother, and like everyone who sacrifices themselves in this ring, which is why I am surrendering my executive authority. Oh, so he has kayfabe executive order and... Kind of, because no everyone knows order. that the elite is in charge. Gotcha. So just have him come out and address it. Yeah. Or have all four of the elite be like, we have sacrificed our shares of this company to one person who will now hold executive authority over the business. That'd be Kurt Angle. It, I think Kurt Angle would be the best one. Because yeah, that, he really would be. That would be insane. Imagine in Philadelphia, was... they announce that and Kurt Angle debuts. That would pop the roof. Yeah, it, he's the, honestly, like, the pinnacle of wrestling from, like, freaking, like, I don't even know when he came into the WWE, but... 98. Uh, say so, like so, from like ninety nine. I mean, uh, really, ish. He's been a main eventer from ninety nine to about two thousand six. Yeah. and then he was one of the only reasons to watch TNA. And yeah. then when he came back, that was huge. Yeah, and, and he probably has the best Hall of Fame induction speech ever. Yeah, he really does because he just was he he understands us about entertaining the yeah. fans, and that's something that a lot of wrestlers don't get. Yeah, Looking at them. you, Goldberg. <laughs> Don't talk about Goldberg like that. I will always talk about Goldberg like that. Alright. We'll go ahead and lump these next four all together because there's not much you know about them. Okay. Aiden Why? English. What about our viewers, Jacob? 
They'll, I'll get say enough for them. I They'll be English, satisfied. I've heard of them at least. Aiden English used to be one of the VOD villains. Aiden English, now that you're out, you should just go get with Simon Gotch and MLW. Maybe don't do the VOD villain gimmick again, but just find something similar to it and run with it because it got over in NXT. It will get over in the Indies. Eric Gee, Rowan. Well, go ahead, go ahead. Keep it reading. Eric Rowan. I love him. I don't, I, I don't get the Rowan gimmick. Some people are really over on him. I'm not really over Wait, on him because he's just there. He's the one, the, the big dude with I the giant big, red beard. I'm about to say, where did uh, Luke Gallo? Is that Luke, Luke Harper. Luke Harper. He's the exalted one of AEW now. He had the now. black beard. Yep. So they were both part of the Wyatt family, right? Yep. I think he should go to AEW too. I wouldn't put Rowan with Harper. At well, least not yet. Work? Can that work? Maybe let him run around on the indies for a little bit and get a little bit more experience and some like training work and work. As well? he, not as well. Okay. He can work and he's a more of a tag team guy, but uh, I think Luke Harper doesn't need to be hindered by a tag team, I feel especially good. now that A and W gave him a significant storyline. Oh, well, I, I just meant I just meant that I feel like he would be a good fit. Yeah, um, I would see Eric Rowan probably in an NWA as a monster heel. Really. Maybe stick him as the bodyguard to someone, like the muscle to, to a squirmy heel. Like, um, Leo Rush. Kind of, yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, you could do that. Call him Chocolate and Vanilla. <laughs> Alright, and then the next two, Epico Cologne and Primo Cologne. Primo and Epico, they're know, like Carlito's cousins. Yeah. They own, or help run their own wrestling promotion in Puerto Rico. In real life? Yeah. Oh. So, just, they'll go there. Yeah. That's... They were never given anything to do. So. I was say, I've heard of them, but I just didn't, I didn't know they, they were They were just allowed to be... They were enhancement talent for I didn't know teams. they were in the like, company. So yeah, I, I think they got released temporarily and brought back. Uh, this next one's very interesting, and you and I have talked about it already. Sarah Logan. She's the... Um, she's the one we just saw on yeah. Raw lose to Shayna Baszler. Yeah. But even uh, outside She's of that, the... she was in the Elimination Chamber match. But this good storyline, though, because she just broke her arm on Raw. And... Yeah, but you don't have to release her for a storyline. Well, if you want to save money. I mean, I guess, but they still. Get it's simple... in, they could sign her back in two months if they really wanted to. Maybe. I wouldn't go back. If a company... Well, I wouldn't either. If a company released me right now... At a time where I could not go and find other work. And I know that WWE's paying him for well, 30 days. Brian, didn't Andrew Bryan do that or something? What? Didn't he sign with WWE to get cut and then come back? Yeah, but that was different. He got cut because the sponsors pressured WWE. What's the difference? You, but you still get cut. I'm just saying. He was, he was back before he even stopped getting paid. Oh. Well, and when he came back, it was kind of used into kayfabe. Oh. Where they were like, "Look, well, he's back." Maybe, maybe this is all just a. Sh maybe this is all work, brothers. Maybe it's a, maybe we're maybe working a, ourselves into a shoot or maybe, shooting ourselves into a work, and we don't even know it. Maybe, it maybe Ronda was right. Why is Ronda not on this list? Because it's, it's a, a work. Yeah. But maybe that they really did. They just wanted to like have a, a month of, of her just being gone, and then. I don't think so. You think she's done? I think I think they'll let her go because really they like, never did anything done? with her. Not done with wrestling. I think I know, she's I someone that will go to AEW. Is she that good to go to AEW though? Because that's the only match I've ever seen her in with Shayna Baszler. To be honest, um, she's she's got like bright bright spots, you know. I feel you. She's definitely not to the point of where she's like a big star, but she will get better. Because of how old she is she? Will. Do you know how old she is? I can look it up. Good thing I'm on my <laughs> computer. Good thing I'm on my Dell Mac. <laughs> She's 26. Oh, really? So she is young. Yeah, so she will go somewhere else. Yeah. Maybe not directly to AEW. Maybe put her in somewhere like a uh, Ring of Honor or an Impact to work with some of those really good wrestlers. Maybe even put her in Japan for a while. I think she could really benefit from that stiff, strong style. You're right. But she'll she'll be around somewhere. I liked her in her match. I mean, and she has long. a unique look that stands yeah. out. Even though it wasn't that long, I still liked it. And she sells really well. Yeah. Like, she sold out like death. Yeah, I know. Oh, this next one. These next two, I should say, are going to make me sad. It's Mike and Maria Kanellis. <sighs> I, I, I know them. It's the cuck. Ah. Uh. Mike Kanellis. Wait, I thought that was the... The 34-year-old... 
And then Maria Canellis is... They just had a baby, too. They're in real life? Yeah, like a real life baby. Well, that's sad. It is sad. But, I mean, at least they're getting paid for those 30, or 30 days. Yeah, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say... And Maria Canellis has a huge ass. Well, that's always a plus. That's literally, while she was on the Indies, part of her gimmick. Having a huge ass? Yeah. You know, I love me a good woman that... Well, I mean, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta understand, in Japan... There's a very famous, like, gif, you could call it. It's, like, from a match of the Bullet Club winning a match that has Mike Canellis on the other team. I don't know what we're going for. I just don't want to go. No, no. Let's look. An hour and 14, so we're kind of short for us. <laughs> we're at, we've got three more wrestlers, and then we'll just... Three? Yeah. And then we'll just talk about the other people, and I'll just kind of name them off. What? I know some of the producers. Yeah, we'll talk about them more, uh, but anyways, like the NXT continue, Superstar. Anyways, continue about the spot in Japan. But, um, it's the club beating down people. Maria gets on there, and AJ is literally like, oh, wow. And so, it starts with Carl Anderson being like, oh, fuck, wow. And he's like pretty much like a cartoon character, like, aluga, right. you know? Right. And she's like swaying her hips around and stuff like that. And then AJ comes over without looking at Maria trying to, like, snap Carl out of it. Carl turns him around and pulls AJ's hair back. And then AJ's also like, Aooga! <laughs> Can I see a video or a gif of this? Afterwards, All yes. Right. I want to see, so see it I want to see if I am like that, too. If I am, if you are like that, leave a comment. <laughs> comment down below, Aooga. <laughs> But, like, and then... Ooga, I'm gonna spam Ooga. Ooga, <laughs> Ooga, Ooga, Ooga. <laughs> but then, uh, Luke Gallows comes over and is telling him, like, stop it, this is stupid. Turns around and threatens to punch her, and the other members of the club are, like, holding him back, so she gets down, she's like, alright, I'm done. And, like, that's funny wrestling. Right. With serious heels. And that was in, uh, New Japan? Japan. Oh, wow. So, I didn't know and, they like, did so that's what, to be honest. Kind of. Okay. Japan has more so storylines of, like... You fought me once, ooh. <laughs> or, like, I'm the best. No, I'm the best. They actually treat it like sport. Like what AEW said they were going to do. Okay, Call it out. Gotcha. <laughs> so those, honestly, go to Ring of Honor again. Mike, you were huge there. Maria, they could always use a uh, pretty lady. You're very pretty. Any, anywhere could use a pretty lady. But Ring of Honor could Eva really Marie, use one right now. Come back to me. Eva Marie, please. <laughs> All you marks, leave me alone. <laughs> awesome. This next one, No Way Jose. There's not much to him. He was a homegrown guy. From what I've never seen him in the Indies, so he's kind of homegrown. Well, I had a friend though that said his name was really cool. No Way Jose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like they should have put him over just because they had. I don't, I don't know what I even am, or like. He's uh, only 31, so he'll what, be. What, what do you else. call people that aren't casuals or marks that are like no name wrestling fans and just know of like Kurt Angle, like Undertaker maybe, and like that just know of wrestling but don't know. Anything. They're not even fans. They're just they're just people. Well, he like no way Jose because I was telling him about this shit. And he was telling how it was funny that Linda McMahon donated all that money and then, ooh, coinkadink, yeah. WB's essential. <laughs> but I am grateful that they are essential because, I mean, we need entertainment during this time of need. Yeah, I just, all seriousness. Yeah, seriousness. It's just interesting that they're deemed essential well, Jane, and we you all can't know be essential. Reeves, Jacob, whatever your name is. We all know why they're essential. But I was just saying. But it's just you can't be essential without these, could he not, without wrestlers. Could he not work? No way, was he? Could he not work, or was he? He could kind of work. So what was the problem? Like, why did they get, or why was he squashed or anything? Like, he was homegrown talent. Why didn't they push him? He like just, Roman Reigns or anything. He like wasn't that? Roman Reigns. Is he big? He's pretty big. Like, I'll pull up his little stat right now. Is he ripped, baby? Is he jacked? He's pretty jacked. Really? He was the guy you saw the other week, and you're like, he's pretty big. Oh, the one that... That I, was wearing yeah. a shirt and had, like, long green dreads. Yeah. He's 6'3 and 245 pounds, and he's Dominican. Um, like, he's he's pretty big. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, like, I just... I don't know. Like, he's, not, he's, like, he's not huge, but like, he's not yoked or anything, but, like... That's pretty yoked in that picture right there. Yeah, but he's not, like, you know, like, prime Goldberg or, like... Right steroids John Cena or anything like that. But he's <laughs> like, he is believably big. 
You right. know, like he is intimidating. He's a big baby. boy. You can oil him up and get him out there, and he's a big and boy. Honestly, knowing Jose, because of just how he is, would be a really good like mid card face anywhere. He's a face. Yeah, he's a face. Could you could probably turn him heel. Could he talk though? Kind of. Or could he ever? I don't know if he ever talked. Uh, cause I know sometimes. They See, just... he really only talked on NXT and then I in like that. conga lines. I hate on... whenever they do that. Whenever it's just like. They have the interest for one guy, and then it comes out, and he's like, and they're facing No Way Jose. Who's already in the ring. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's, they're, they're just enhancement talent. That's and No I'm Way Jose deserves better, because I've seen some good matches with him. And his I'm finisher saying. is the fastball, well, where we, he, like, winds up a punch and then punches someone, which is funny. We will make this whole big strip at the end of this. But. Honestly, I would throw, if I would put No Way Jose somewhere like a... He's probably another NWA was? guy. How old would you say he was? 31. 31. So he still has some years yeah. to he can have. At least nine years. Around like 39, 38 to 42 ish. Is where they're It's like prime. Yeah. I, I'd put him in like an NWA. And I think he's someone that, with that kind of recorded and like kind of. Actual being able to react be with there fans. with a littler crowd. It's like, yeah, it's, like you it, said, it, it, he can work yeah. it, you know? Yeah. It's an intimate crowd that if you really put the time into someone, will like, appreciate it. Right. Put No Way Jose into some matches and actually let him show that he can wrestle, and people will respect him and cheer him. Right. Now these next two, they're the at, to me, they're the biggest heartbreakers. We'll start with the lesser of the heartbreaks and finish with the you hardest. You these are the biggest heartbreakers? The last one that I'm going to say is definitely my biggest heartbreak. I would disagree with you on that already, but I will listen. First, we'll talk about Zack Ryder. Zack oh. Ryder. Zack Ryder is I, big. Yeah, that is big. So, he is only 34. Wow. He was... See, the thing I don't understand is he was in that WrestleMania commercial. He was just like, in that WrestleMania commercial. He debuted in 2004 as well. 2004? Yeah, he, he was the he other was 18 one. years old? Just like Kurt Hawkins is when they got signed. How do they squash talent like that? And then that? you also have to remember, Kurt. I mean, Zack Ryder was in like WWE CW in like 2008. Yeah. He was an like, edgehead. I just don't understand how you... He was long out in IC, and he's really the first one to start using social media yeah, to get over, yeah. because he had his YouTube channel that he did like vlogs on, and he, like his merchandise... Had a QR code that you would scan and take yeah. you to the YouTube channel. People were cheering for him, and they'd sell out of his merch when he wasn't even on the card. That's what I'm that was saying. Some people hijacked the show cheering for him. It's like, it's it's crazy, really. I He's, don't he was almost like a pre Daniel Bryan before the Yes movement. What do you mean? There was Bryan the Rider like Revolution, is what it was called. Daniel Bryan was like before he had the Yes movement? Kind of. Really? Well, like, Zack Ryder is like a prototype of the Yes John movement. Cena. <laughs> like when Ryder was the United States champion, times were good. Yeah, I remember. There I is remember a famous. I I remember picture. just saying woo 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 for like. Yeah, and like crowds used to blow up for the woo woo yeah. woo. Like that was big, bigger even than like well, at Ryback's peak. He was nothing compared to the woo right. woo. But. I mean, you guys even gotta remember, Zack Ryder's had big moments there, he had the big moment, he's had good matches with The Miz constantly, yeah. he's a multi-time mid-card champion. You know, The Miz and him really, like, Yeah, they're champion. good friends, yeah. yeah. And him, Dolph Him, Ziggler. Dolph, um, Miz, and Jomo are, like, really Who's good friends Jim, together. John Morrison? Yeah, they're all really the, good honestly, friends together. Honestly, those four have been shit on by WWE. Oh, it, see, if WWE would have pulled the trigger on every one of them... They'd be the biggest stars. They would be the ones. Yeah, because you gotta and, remember how long they've been. Here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And look at how much they've put up with Zack Ryder, especially. Not only would he wore one time where don't only forget. one leg of his tights had a leg, and the other just didn't. Don't forget. And he made that over. Grinder. Don't forget about the Miz. Whenever he thought he had pyro, and he came out with sparklers. <laughs> <laughs> at least but the no, Miz just, has had the best out of those four, yeah, which he, is saying. A lot. But I'm saying those are four very talented performers that get over. They can talk. They can play any angle you give them. He yeah. will face anything, and they have been shit on because they're not six eight six. Because they're not John Cena, really. Because they all were getting they were, big yeah. at Super Cena. Well, time. true, yeah. And see, 
There's this thing that's like the golden shovel of wrestling, which is where you bury people, anyone you go against. Yeah. But here's the problem. When you only have room on the top for one guy, and you only push that one guy, you can't have someone else. Similar to Hogan, Jake the Snake couldn't be the guy, Mr. Perfect couldn't be the guy, Big Boss Man couldn't be the guy, uh, Roddy Piper couldn't be the guy. Like These top faces could never be on top. Because only Hogan could. But then you have the point of boredom, 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 whatever. Boredom. And that's the same thing that happened with John Cena. Because people got bored of John Cena. Yeah. It's like the Attitude Era in WCW. You had multiple guys that could any night win a championship. Well, I mean, that's the thing about what made the Attitude Era exciting is they made it exciting. But that's what I'm saying. With John Cena, like, everybody knew if John Cena came out, he was winning. Yeah, basically. That was for... It's eight, a foregone yeah, conclusion. Eight years or at whatever. At least. Really, like, what, like 2006-ish, Yeah. once he started going against Chris Jericho and he got traded to Raw, up until, like, 2000... I mean, you gotta think, he was main eventing pay-per-views when he wasn't even the champion. Yeah, I know. Like, CM Punk's historic title reign was in the middle of the card... While John Cena f- facing John Laurinaitis yeah. was the main event of Fastlane. That's what I'm saying. And that's or what over the mean. edge, maybe. That's One of those. Over the limit. Just, you have such a long time of, like, somebody you know is going to win. It's just not exciting. That's yeah. not, it's like... I, I, but it I, sells merch of the kids, brother. <laughs> but I, I equate it to, like, football or anything like that. It's like... It's like what Patriots, CM Punk said to... You have to... the Warriors, you have the Yankees. Everybody who's not a fan of them loves to cheer against them. Yeah. And put, especially with wrestling, where you can actually, it's choreographed. You can do something. You can make somebody yeah. win. Do it. Make it more exciting than just having John Cena win. And now, here's what's really sad about it. They would sometimes give us false starts with Zack Ryder. Yeah. At WrestleMania, oh uh, god, which one was it? Thirty-four, I think, maybe thirty-three. Regardless, he won the Intercontinental Championship in a ladder match. Yeah, and that crowd erupted because it was a genuinely unexpected moment. Yeah, I know people love him. And I mean, he even does a, He did an elbow called the uh, El Bro oh. <laughs> off of a ladder. Yeah. He puts his body on the line for spots like that. And, like, Zack Ryder, similar to those other, like, four or three that are with him, will do that. Yeah. And then you even have, like, the big moment, like what we have with Kurt Hawkins that we talked about at the start of this, where they won the Raw Tag Team titles. And that was a huge deal. And you go from that to being released in a year. That's what I'm saying. WWE, like, they hoard so much talent that they shit on people. They just have it. They it's can't like, have everyone be the main eventer. Well, yeah. But really, but they the don't, thing is like... They don't organically grow the people that they... See, that's anyone that gets over on their own, bad. Punished. Yeah, like what, Zack Ryder. And that's what I'm saying. Like it, They shit on them because organically grown, they're over, they're good, and they're shit on. And then that's how you had... I mean, you had a really inorganically push with Dolph Ziggler, really, and it wasn't. Well, see, when Dolph was getting over, the company didn't want him over. Yeah. And then when they want him over, exactly. we don't want him over. Yeah. Because, like, you can put him in there with Roman Reigns, but we know he's gonna lose to him. Right. You can put him in there with Goldberg, but we know he's gonna lose to him. Right. You can put him in there with anyone now, and now? really, we know he's gonna lose <laughs> to him. <laughs> yeah, Otis. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> but, and... John Morrison, The Miz, I feel I feel really bad. John Morrison... I'm he, so glad they're getting time to be the SmackDown champions. Though. But I, they have so much potential for so much more. The Miz... See, that's the thing. The like, Miz could be, in the my Miz opinion... The Miz especially should have been a champion in 2017-ish. He could be the person that they wanted after John Cena. He could have been... He should be the top heel. Yeah. Because Miz... I've never shown it to you, I don't think. He cut a shoot promo on Daniel Bryan where it was it was in kayfabe, but it's non-scripted, but it's art. Honestly, it's all it's, about where he's like, because basically, Daniel Bryan called him a coward, right. saying like you defend your championship in all these cowardly ways with like roll ups and cheating, and it's, it's a coward's move. Right. And then the Miz was like, then why aren't you in a ring? Why aren't you somewhere fighting? He's uh, like, I can't. I have injuries. And he's like, then you can leave the WWE. 
you love wrestling so much, go to the bingo halls where you say that you <laughs> I, love, I, I, go there yeah. and wrestle. Don't call it me a coward because I'm here injury free for eight years because my style allows me to keep fighting. And they're like, everybody, like, oh. everyone was like, oh yeah. my god, like. And that's what I'm saying. The Miz, even I really feel like you could make him a fake. I don't, just me personally. Now you really could if you knew how to do it because. Just because the Miz is a face doesn't mean he has to become generic. Right. You can still have him as like I'm a Hollywood A lister. Yeah. Pre- kind of like with Elias, whenever they turn him face or heel. Yeah. Nothing changes except it's the like people he's facing. Yeah. It's like you could still have him be the face of the company or whatever. But it's like I am so fucking tired of Roman Reigns. Yeah. I love him, but Roman Reigns is they're they're trying to find their next John Cena. And that's not what WWE needs right now. They you know who need... should be their next John Cena? No one. They don't need anybody in the window for eight years. Aleister Black. No. Bob Just... Lash. <laughs> they need to switch shit up. It's not 1994 anymore with Hollywood Hulk Hogan running wild on everybody. It's... There are no vitamins or <laughs> prayers, brother. But that... switch it up every six months. Like... Like, you can have you can a long-standing have... champion. Like, right now, Drew McIntyre, you could have him hold that title for, like, two years, right? Two years? What the hell? No, look, you could, you could give him that title for two years. Don't if know. If you have a constantly changing style of his competitor. I wouldn't even want it for two Me, personally, my style of wrestling, I don't want to see a champion for two years. But I, I don't mean he has to hold the title consecutively for two years. Okay, I mean, I he's in that main event picture for yeah, two okay, years. Yeah, okay, fine, that's fine with me. But you have him going against people like Seth Rollins. And then you have him going against people like Apollo, who's like a powerhouse. Yeah. And then you have him going against people like Big Show more. Maybe not the Big Show, but like Braun. But you, know, can, like bring, you, bring, you can bring one person in for a two-month period of like heat, an old-timer. Bring him in for a two-month period. But don't give him the fucking title. Just bring Don't make him, him the... Like, he you should not be the ulti- yeah. penultimate. Like Goldberg. Yeah. Don't make Goldberg your all, your end all, be all. And that goes for you too, Brock. I, Brock Lesnar as the final boss of WWE works. But the, here's the thing about the final boss: don't make him the fucking champion. I you like, make him a special attraction. Yeah. But your special attraction shouldn't be your champion. He, but he'd be a transition championship holder. Who Brock? Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Because that's. Heck, they have used Brock to build others. Yeah, that's what Brock Lesnar, if he's not going to work full-time, which he's pretty fucking, he's not really that fucking old, but he's kind of old. He's to the point of where he doesn't need to, right. and the business doesn't need him to. And that's what he can be, the transitional person right now. He's 42, he's, but that's the same as AJ, who wrestles weekly. But that's what I'm saying, Brock Lesnar's not going to be somebody who's like, I'm going to wrestle week, weekly. Yeah, he, just he doesn't, doesn't need to be. Right, and that's what I'm saying, make him a fucking title holder for... Three months or something, and then... And then draw off the belt. Yep, and then go on from there. He doesn't need to be holding the belt for more than three months. Well, now that our rant's done... Let's uh, get to I'm, who I'm, I am heated right now, Jay. I think some, this last person's going to get I, you I, heated. I'm drinking wine right now. I'm all We're heated We're wine up. drunk, baby. <laughs> I am. You're I mean, I'm right. not, but... You want to chuck some nope. wine? Slap the bag, baby? Nope. Frenzia. Anyways, if you want to sponsor us, that's the real sponsor I want right now. Send us boxes of wine. We'll get a face cam going. We'll be slapping that bag like nobody's business. I don't know if that's a lot on YouTube. Probably. But <laughs> Anyways. The last one, who I think is the most heartbreaking, and it's for Who was talking reasons. about? Zack Ryder? Yeah. Rusev. Did Lana get released? Nope. Oh, Rusev. It's kind of amazing that Lana didn't get released. I guess because they're wanting She's to keep Bobby her for Bob Lash. What are they going to do with it? I can't believe she's not going to leave. She probably will. I am i don't know. Would you rather leave or stay so you're still getting that paycheck? So at least you have that good bit of money coming well, in. Well, I mean, like, no offense to anybody, but I feel like Lana's like, I don't know, I feel like at this age of I life, think Lana's, like, Lana's going to be the one that she's going to stay with the company and see where it puts her. Yeah, but I mean, well, I mean, you know, uh, even though John Moxley left... His wife is still there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And like, that's fine. But it's here's hard. the thing about Rusev, okay? It's fucking rough to... Oh, I mean, I'm sure it is. Fucking John Moxley, he, he could have had a spot, though. He had, Like, if he wanted to be Dean Ambrose, he could have stayed. Yeah, but he left because he loves wrestling. And right. honestly, and they Rusev loves wrestling. They fired Rusev, though. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. That's shitty. 
It is shitty because, because especially Rusev, right now. Yeah, even you said well, Rusev. He gave pledged money. twenty thousand yeah. dollars to WWE staff that were being let go. They should just to be let go. Do you know how fucked up that is? Like somebody how, should have I mean, said. Think before. about like how. In the NBA right now, there are people that are doing that. Like, yeah. Giannis gave it, like, a million or, like, 1.5 or something. Or maybe even... even no if it was only offense like... to you, Rusev, but you were not, like, the big dog of WWE. No, but he was still the one doing that. I know, that's what I'm saying. That should have been other people. should have been Braun fucking Strowman. You should you should, shouldn't be poor. See, people like Roman, people like John Cena, people like Brock. Yeah. Like, I know they won't, but, like, y'all are the ones making... Seven figures. Rhonda. You know? Rhonda. Even when you get to like Triple H, Vince McMahon, Stephanie. Yeah. But then you've got Vince who's making. You know Vince isn't struggling. Well, duh. But he's firing people. And as we talked about at the beginning, WWE went up in their stocks. They're yeah. doing better. They didn't need to let these people go. Even if you think, like, well, we can't judge them because they. Are a big major company and everything like that. Well, because they are a major company, and because they had cash reserves, and because the entire idea of being deemed an essential business is that's, based that's on providing smart. the entertainment that these superstars provide, you do not have the moral right to let them go. But that's what it's all about, baby. Business. I I, I emerged earlier. No matter which way you turn it, the bread comes first. That's what Vince McMahon, that's what you should know Vince McMahon is doing from day one. No matter which side you turn it, but I tell you the what, bread comes first. Letting go of Rusev, that's going to come back to bite him. I don't think it will at all. No, you have to understand. That, Rusev, that without won't. ever being on TV or that without won't. getting any kind of TV time, got to be the top merch seller for a period. He was top merch seller? Very brief, or as a heel. Not as like the face because Roman. But for a time, he made a sh like video on his YouTube channel, Instagram, everything like that, where he's just working out, singing the Shawn Michaels song, where he's like, I think I'm Machka. I know I'm Rusev. And that's where the Happy Rusev Day comes from. But they had calendars made where every day was Rusev Day. It was to the point, kind of like what we were talking about with Zack Ryder a second ago, where he wouldn't be on the card. He's not there. He's not booked. And the crowd is still like, Rusev Day. Rusev but Day. you have to understand, the casuals for WWE bring so much more money than the marks. Yeah, like you, but, like but. everybody else that watched Rusev work out, mm -hmm. like everybody else that pops for Zack Ryder besides myself. But no, no, Zack Ryder would get well, yeah, well, yeah, casuals. But, Don't you dare disrespect that. But I'm just saying though, they can squash Rusev and make him forgettable like that. They could do that with anyone. Yeah, I know. That's what I, not look anyone. at what. No, not no, any, they could. Because look no, at it. Think anyone. about how many casuals don't know who Chris Benoit is. A lot of people know who Chris Benoit is. Just from the now, film. because of the Vice stuff they do. Oh, well, but well. before that, do you know how many people had no fucking clue? Uh, uh, my age, people, everybody knows who Chris Benoit is. If I said Chris Benoit, people would be like, damn, it killed his family. Like yeah, this. but people my age, even just two and a half years younger than you, because I, I was only eight when Chris Benoit did that. Oh, yeah. My age group would not know him at all. And the thing about it is, he was a champion, won the Royal Rumble from number one, over 20 years in the business, Japan, yeah. WCW, WWF, WWE, all of it. And Beat Triple H in the Reign of Terror, huge deal to being gone. And then, all honesty, that's WWE's prime market probably, is that, not, not, maybe not prime market, but it's a very big market WWE has, is that like 10 to 13 year old range where See, it's like but here's the thing Ooh, right I love wrestling so much I love the violence and I love the drama and I love the women and but then and that's like what I'm saying it's like my age people they mm -hmm. knew Chris Ben Watkins they were following at that time yeah like if you ask anybody who Viscera was or like uh, like a lot of people Carlito were, yeah like people know him my people know him and it's a two year difference that people that your age doesn't know. Yeah, but see, like, people my age wouldn't know people... Oh, maybe not, because wrestling took such a decline after Chris Benoit. But they still... Th th but, there's like, a lot of people that still watch wrestling at your age, at yeah. 10 years old, because that's whenever it's like... Ooh, it's TV that's when it was 14. cool, you know? Yeah. Well, it was TV PG by that time, but... Well, I don't care. But, but here's still, the thing, like, okay? Ooh, Brian Pennies and everything like the that. The big competition has become for the 18 to 25 market, what we are now. Well, yeah, I know. They're trying to bring back in the... Fucking yeah. market, so that way, whenever we have but kids, guess who's like getting that? AEW. By far. Really? 
dominantly. I, I, I'm going to say this, and I mean, it's going to be the truth. People our age don't watch wrestling. That at least in my group of... Maybe. But I really think some of the people that they've let go from this list are the ones that could change that. Nobody knows Rusev. Maybe, but think about if he started to have the opportunities to be... Cool. Kurt Angle? I'm telling you, Kurt Angle yeah. might be the piece to this whole fucking war. Because Kurt Angle? It's you like, have to think, it's like do you know how much people your age would love yeah. white trash Heath Slater? Yeah. Coming out there drinking and being like, look, yeah. I've got kids that I haven't met yet. <laughs> I have to pay for them. I don't really care if I lose or win. I just got to be here and get my money. But I'm telling you right now. People Kurt, would love that shit. Kurt Angle could be late 90s Eric Bischoff. Oh, absolutely. He and could change it. Drake Maverick could do that. Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, if you let them go and just be like beastly, like real stiff fighters, yeah. kind of like what Bradshaw and Farouk used to be. Yeah. You know how big Luke Gallows is and how good of a big boot he yeah, does? Yeah, I know. Let him start doing that shit like the clothesline from hell. That's what I'm saying. Just fucking kill people and people will watch. I just don't understand why WWE let, like, big talent like that, like, name talent that is, mm -hmm. can work and does everything like that, why they let them go if they're trying. I don't know, I feel like there's a lot more people they could have let go. Probably. Now here's the, we'll just to include this how, for anyone how who's watching we, this. How, we are like we currently really at an hour and 40, so we're getting close to our normal time. We'll just start shooting for two hour episodes. That's fine with me. But the NXT Superstars release, you won't know any of them, but they were just you know, kind of training. They're the young people that should be getting the opportunities to become big. Diona Peraza, MJ Jenkins, Dan Matha, and Alexander J Jack yeah, Jackson. Yeah, I have no idea who any of those That's fine. Are. And then the Performance Center coaches, Kendo Cashin, Karina Deeb and Ace Steel, they were the people training those young people. Now let's talk real quick about the producers. They have been technically for load, which means, uh, like, we're going to hire you back. Right. But I'm not going to pay for you now. Right. And honestly, if I were them, I wouldn't go back to it. I, w I would say, fuck y'all. Hell no, I'm not doing this shit. Well, yeah, probably I would too. Because, like, fuck that. Yeah. So let's talk real quick about him. Billy Kidman, very long time cruiserweight champion from WCW, was in WWE for a while. Used to he's I feel had, like I know Billy he Kidman. has pinned Hulk Hogan in he's, late WCW. Really, which that tells you even Hulkster liked him. Yeah, Billy Kidman. If you put him, what is somewhere, what, wait, what is the guy's name in WCW? Is like this company's in shit because of uh, uh, that, my friend. It, oh my god, I'm about to forget it and I'm going to be so embarrassed. It's, uh... He Vince Russo. Out, yeah, he came out and he wouldn't, like... Hulk this wouldn't company <laughs> is in shit because of bastards like Hulk Hogan! And he wouldn't let fucking, um... Jeff Jarrett pin him. Yep. Wouldn't yeah. put him over. It doesn't right. work for me, brother. Anyways. Look, Billy Kidman, because of how good he is as like a cruiserweight and telling big versus little stories, I feel like I know he's him. the guy that made the Shooting Star Press more famous. Really? Yeah. Huh. He does some really gross ones, though. <laughs> like where they do not go as they should go. Oh. But. Those are my favorites. He is a master of telling the story of, like, I'm a little guy getting my ass kicked. Really? Put him on AEW and help him put over Lance Archer. I don't know who Lance Archer is. Yes, you do. We watched him the other day. The Murder Hawk Machine. Oh, dude. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh. People like that. You can have more monsters like Jake Hager. You can have Wardlow. You can have people like... Bring uh, in fucking Rusev. Rusev, if you bring him in. You've got Jeff Cobb, who kind of is all elite. I don't really know. Evil Uno, Luke Harper. People like that. Billy Kidman can tell a great underdog story. Honestly, he I will think... will help a lot. I think AEW, though, they just... They need... The firepower. I don't know. They and they're trying. See, here's the they, thing. They get AEW the needs the firepower to start. But what's good about AEW is they have some young unknown talent who are getting the chance to shine. People like um, Orange Cassidy yeah. who in his match with Pop because you know WWE fans can remember Neville. Yeah. But then they see this new guy. They're like Orange Cassidy. What the fuck is this? And then all of a sudden he puts on an 18 minute banger. But, with Pac, and you're like, is wow. A, but is AUW putting, like, I hate to say this, but this is the fucking trap that WWE has. It's like, ooh, I bring in the old, or the people that I know, and they bring them in, and then they fucking squash their new guys with them. Is that what AEW does? Not as much as you would think. I mean, think about it. They had Chris Jericho as the first champion, right? But that's because Chris Jericho, Jericho is knowable. And then they have John Moxley now as the champion. 
And again, that could be just because John Moxley is known, but at least now he's getting to be the top guy, which he never was in WWE. Right. And the thing about John Moxley versus Dean Ambrose is John Moxley will put his body on the line, which gets our age to be like, holy face? shit, yeah. So if you bring John Mox like is the kind of guy that does three. like DDTs through glass okay. and suplexes into a barbed wire just mesh. So like thumbtacks, like, broken glass. You've seen those spots. Right. They are the kind of thing that like even your friends just sitting around getting drunk and watching that yeah. would love it. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Like you bring like yeah, like EC3 or something like that. that yeah. Could be a, I mean, think about it. Easily EC3. Like, Bring in Drake Maverick as a plucky uh, underdog. Like an easily, Bring in like, Kurt Angle as for one match against him where it's like, you might can be hardcore, but can you wrestle? Uh, you can fight, but can you <laughs> wrestle? You know? And that's like Bring in Zack Ryder. Bring in Rusev. And if they keep him as a face, he'd be like, can't, like you might be the face, but like an easily like washable heel like that. Yeah. Uh, be like something like that. I think AEW, this is their time to, like, this is going to be their peak. Of like where they. This is where they could be the most this is dangerous. Their, yeah, you know? This is their swim or drown. I don't know really what the word I'm trying like the sink or swim. Sink or swim. There we go. This is their time right now because they have the talent available that they can snipe at zero to no cost. Basically. And see, now look at this where they've got some other producers. Producing these is people, where this will they, be yeah. huge yeah. because they've got Mike Rotunda, who's the father of Bray, and yeah. uh, I think I told you the other day that it's the grandpa, but I was wrong again. IRS I was wrong the, about being wrong. It's IRS. It's Mike Rotunda. So the same person. Yes, okay. that's the dad. So do you, if you do you think that if Mike Rotunda went AEW that um, mm, probably not. I don't Maybe Bo, so, but not Bray. Just because so, Bray's actually I don't know because you also have to think Bray Bray's, when he was getting over as a cult leader squashed by John Cena started to get think, back over squashed by Roman squashed by uh, Seth Rollins. Has the new Fiend character, which is unstoppable, and yeah. every, it's bringing people to watch. That yeah. is something that people would like. I'd say, I'd say, gets beat by Goldberg. I say, if you have six months though, by SummerSlam, if the Fiend is not over, Bray Wyatt leaves. Uh, I say, if like I think squash, if they keep holding him down, like if they refuse to make him the man again, or if they use him just to put Roman over, I think yeah. he might leave. Then I would be all there for it if he goes AEW and fuck I'd him. Be, I would watch him no matter where he goes. I would too. I don't care if I have to buy something. I don't care if I have to wait. I don't care. Just I would too, because Ray Wyatt was his real name? Um, the Fiend. <laughs> what? I'm just calling him The Fiend. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. And Bo Dallas, I love you, brother. But <laughs> Bo's not going to be kind of like some of these people that have been released. Kurt he Hall could James. be the kind of guy that, you know, For is a indie? squirmy heel. Yeah. Like when he was doing the Bo leave and all that kind of stuff and like he thought he was the face and all that. That yeah. got real heat because it's annoying. It's almost X-Pac heat. Yeah. <laughs> but it's purposeful X-Pac heat, right. right? That's something. You put him on like NWA, holy shit. Those fans <laughs> will be pelting him with trash. And he, you have him be like, confetti, for me, you guys <laughs> shouldn't have, as it's like, beer cans, you know? I was just like, so obvious that this like... Yeah. I like that's that. what it was like in NXT. Yeah, I know, that's what I like, though. I, See, I, I Rotunda, would watch that. I think Mike Rotunda's just been in the business so long that he's seen what gets over and he can help anyone. I saw that Royal Rumble with IRS whenever he went. <laughs> he can't really work, but you know, I know, but doesn't I'm need Because he was from a time where you didn't need to work. He just needed a character. And really, he can probably help with the character building. Yeah. Which is what we would love. And now this next guy, this would go which straight what, to AEW. Is, but I'm saying which is AEW needs is character building. Oh, absolutely. For they kind of got it. Think about it. Orange Cassidy. You got John Moxley, who's kind of a character about just being like I'm hardcore and crazy. You got but Matt like you, Hardy, who's gonna go insane as a character. But kind of like you said though beforehand, like AEW is trying to be like sport only or whatever, like Japan is. Just but let yourself be American. Uh, be American wrestling, like be American entertainment wrestling. And you know what? If you want to have it, feels like a real match. It feels like a real fight. Great, you can do that. Yeah, but also but have Cassidy that. and Pac copy paste for everyone yeah. but have that story in between it that's what the WWE like struggles so hard with I think is finding that line between entertainment or like not entertainment just like story the and drama wrestling. and the match yeah yeah because they have like they go one side or the other and that's what it's been for so long and they haven't found that mix match for, in a long time 
Now, I'll tell you who's going to be huge wherever he goes. Dave Finley, which is Fit Finley. Like Finley. Mr. Finley, or not Mr. Finley, but Finley, the Irishman with the yep. shillelagh. Really? He can put on some matches. He can put on some matches. He's been around a long time. He's known as a tough they let guy him go? Baller. Yeah, he's gone furloughed. Wow. He might come back just because of how much he's had with the company. But if I were him and I got furloughed during a pandemic, he's the kind of guy that you could put on, like, he should have been on NXT UK helping the brawlers. But yeah, is he really Irish or is yeah. he? Well, why is he already on there? Because mm. he helps the other people. He, he has helped a lot of good matches. But that's what I'm saying. I mean, these are the type of people that AEW, like Singers Home, like we just said, like they could snipe in a yeah. heartbeat. And they could make their company. I mean, look at some of these other people. Sean Devari. Didn't you say Ted Turner's a fucking fun Backer, yeah. Sean oh, Devari, Scott and you know Armstrong, Ted who used Turner. to be a referee, but a ref he's I a good it, referee. Yeah. Sarah Stock doesn't really matter. Shane the Hurricane Helms, you want to talk about the characters? Hurricane? Yeah. You know how much he could help out in AEW with yeah. people doing comedy? Like, think about people like your Jungle Boy and your Luchasaurus and your Orange yeah. Cassidy. That is perfect for the Hurricane. And then you have Lance fucking Storm, who is the fucking man. Lance Storm oh, is... Man. He's been in ECW, Smoky Rest or Smoky Mountain Wrestling. He's been in WCW. He's in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Old, old. He's old. Days. He's, wow. he's pretty old. I mean, he has been everywhere. Like Lance Armstrong. Not, wait, why am I saying Lance Armstrong? That's Lance like her. <laughs> Storm. Let me get you a picture of him. He's Canadian, which makes him cool automatically. Look at that boy. Look at him. That is that should have been a main event. He's Canadian. Yeah. But look at him. Like, that looks like the top level heel. I know, I know. I've seen him before. And he even had a Canadian championship for a while. Really? Yeah. Look, here's a picture of it. So what, like, who are the producers that they're saving? Oh, God. I don't even know off the top of my head, but... Like, if I they mean, have those kind of producers backstage that are, like, working for them, like, I'm, I'm just curious if... I mean, Jason Jordan didn't get cut. I don't know who that is. Jason Jordan. Yeah. He was tag team partners with Chad Gable. Shorty G, G, baby! Let's see. Um, what, what is this? Nigel is apparently helping. So that's cool. Nigel McGuinness. Are, the, um, are these producers like that bad? Or like, I don't, I don't understand. Because I feel like those are people that know the business. They know the work. They know everything. They know the spots. Yeah, they, that's what their job is. That's they what got I'm Adam Pierce, Devon Dudley, Glenn. Yeah, Devon Dudley. Yeah, he's one. See, uh, Glenn Jamie Jenkins? Noble. Yeah, Glenn Jake. Or no, Glenn Joseph. Uh, I say Kane's <laughs> no. pulling Jeff double duty. Jeff Jared. Mark what Henry's TNA? one. Michael Hayes, oh. Road Dog, Sanjay Dutt, Tyson Kidd, Steve Carino. Like they kept all those people. So they have good ones. Yeah, MVP's one. Really? So that's cool. yeah. that's why he's so pulling. That's why he's still there every now and then. Pull some double duty. But I mean, like, these guys, like, Christopher Parks, who's, um, Abyss. Oh, that's Abyss? Yeah, he's there now. And, I mean, even if, though it's just as a producer, like, so. Yeah. But I, I mean, that's like. That's what I'm saying. Like, you have to keep those older guys on just so that way they. It's just, it's crazy some of these guys that got released. Yeah, I know. The fact. Trust me. I feel like they kept Tyson Kidd because of sympathy because he got his neck broken by Samoa Joe on WWE pre-show. Oh. But I mean, like, Billy Kidman, Finley, and Finley. Lance Storm and the Hurricane, those Hurricane. are people that are, like, I recognizable. IRS, what's his name? Mike Rotunda. Just because of the connections he has with The Fiend and Rian Boo Dallas? I mean, I that's mean, big. You gotta think, like, how somebody would feel like, oh, my dad just got fucking laid off, like, I don't want to work I, for this company anymore. I don't know. Maybe we're just sentimental, but if they fired my dad in the middle of a pandemic, I'd be like, y'all are not a good company. Yeah. And I might not quit, but I wouldn't re-sign with them. I would be willing to sign, if AEW said like, hey, I have something that's just as good or better, I'd be like, sign me up, like, hands clean. Especially if you hired my fucking dad. Yeah, I mean, and it's like... Especially because I feel like he's probably a good... And imagine, like, not only do you have IRS helping to do the matches and, like, character, they already have Jake the Snake Roberts helping people do promos and stuff. Imagine Bray Wyatt getting 
some lessons in promo from Jake the Snake. Well, I'm sure WWE has a lot of... Uh, yeah, freaking Paul Heyman in you yet. Yeah, but Paul Heyman tells a very different style and well, story yeah, in his promo than Jake the Snake. Right. And, like... Then Bray Wyatt does. Bray Wyatt doesn't not, tell the stories uh, like character, Paul Heyman. character, right. Bray Wyatt tells the story of, like, I am a monster. Right. I'm gonna be a monster. Well, yes, yeah, so and I think after he beat John Cena at WrestleMania, I say give it whatever SummerSlam is eight months away or six months away till no. August. And well, if I mean, he's not, would be like what, uh, five, four, really? Yeah, kinda. whatever. Whenever his contract's up, if he's not over and he's not like, if the they're man, not letting him, get, he, he doesn't. The thing about pro wrestling is wins and be, losses don't be, matter yeah, exactly. As long as what they're saying can be backed up. Because, like, right. while they don't matter in the sense of, like, well, you lost, so you don't have a right to be here, what they do matter about is, like, well, you said you were going to destroy this guy, and you lost. Yeah. And then you said you are going to beat this other guy, and then you lost. And then you said you are going to beat this guy, and then you lost. Which right. is what they did with Bray Wyatt, and then he created The Fiend, and then he lost to Goldberg. Yeah. But before that, he kind of lost to Seth Rollins in that Hell in a Cell. And then, I mean, he got to do the Firefly Funhouse, but you got to wonder if it wasn't that, would they have put him over? And really, he didn't necessarily win because it was just kind of a promo. And we haven't really heard anything about it since. So yeah, they haven't even acknowledged, have they? Not really. John Cena said something on Twitter that kind of made it seem like he was gone, gone, but... Um, what did he say? It was something like, um, when your time comes past the torch instead of letting it go out or something like that. Well, hmm. So, like, I mean, maybe he's actually gone? This is just an odd time in wrestling, and it's honestly the first... I don't know. I've had this realization that, like, WWE, like I said, they hoard talent... To the point where they ruin it. Yeah. We'll save it for another episode, which I feel like we're going to have like a backlog of episodes that we say we'll get to, but well, we'll go through and look at some Reeves, of their rosters. Whatever your name, your name is, we'll have a lot of time on our hands yeah. with this. I mean, we can game. go through their entire roster one day and be like, should they be used more? Yeah. Because you got to think, people like Finn Balor, people like Shorty G... Really, people like Cesaro, Sami Zayn, Sheamus, Drew Gulak, Akira Tozawa, who's just now just Tozawa. For some reason, WB hates two names now, unless you're Roman Reigns, I guess. But, like, uh, all I'm saying is Kevin Owens, just keep an eye on that Kevin, because before you know it, you're just going to be Owens. All I'm saying is, though, I'm just sad for the people that did get released, and... Thoughts and prayers to them. And Thoughts and prayers to Mean Gene. I'm not Mean Gene. Oh, also Mean Gene yes. family, but Howard Finkel and his family. Just everyone. It's, it's, it's a tough time. It's yeah, a really dark everyone, day. Everyone, not even in the wrestling industry, just everyone you're thinking about it, just that are going through this tough time. It's a weird time for everybody. We've never lived through this shit before. But we just want to, our wrestling, our entertainment to not co-interfere and just enjoy it and Forget it's hard to it. do it when they treat it like this. Yeah, exactly. They show Here's what it. I'll say to finish out the episode. You should support the independents. You listening. Yeah, you. <laughs> um, don't be a Braun Strowman and say, don't be poor. <laughs> but no, think about it. Pretty much all of these people that we went through, even the producers, the people on NXT, the Performance Center trainers, the wrestlers, all of them, even the people that we didn't mention that have recently been released, like The Revival, who just got out of their contract, and Matt Hardy, who just got out of his. Yeah. They are going to be in those indies. Yeah. That's a lot. If you really want to support those wrestlers and you're really upset about what WWE did, support the indies. Buy them tickets, buy their merch, buy DVDs. We're about to get stimulus checks, and I promise there are some cool fucking shirts yeah. if you look. Go look at some of Kenny Omega shirts. They're fucking sick. But That's, either way, support yourself first and then support. Take care of yourself. Yep. Take care of each other. Stay safe out there and... Wash your fucking pr- hands. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers to everybody. We'll get through this tough time with wrestling content along the way. Thank you for listening to the Casual Warriors. If you have any suggestions for what you want to see next, leave them in the comments below. Wrap them up and show them through. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and it went, it doesn't matter what you want to see next. <laughs> Perfect. But thank you for listening.